I always forget. Okay, so sorry, yeah, guys. Uh, as I was saying, uh, if you are mid to long term trader, or if you trade on uh, four hours and above uh, charts regularly, so I will recommend you to use the 20, 50, 100, or 200 period, okay, uh, moving average. But for short term trading, uh, or short term traders like me, okay, uh, if you trade on a one hour chart or below, okay, I will recommend uh, using <coughs> uh, 10, 21, and 50 EMA. Okay, that's what I use, 10, 21, and 50. Okay. So basically what are moving averages? Okay, they are these lines that, these curvy lines that you see on a chart. <clears throat> okay. So the color that you, the color that you choose is up to you. Okay, for me, I, I, I use green to represent a 10 EMA, blue to represent 21, red to represent uh, 50 EMA, and then I use a dark red for the 200 uh, simple moving average. Okay, you, you decide, you guys decide on the color that, that you want to use. Okay, All right, that's no right or wrong. So if you if you follow my colors, uh, I mean that's the best. Uh, if, let, uh, uh, especially during one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with me, so that when I look at your charts, I know what I'm looking at. Okay, but as I said, it's up to you. Okay, to 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 choose the colors that you like. Okay, so how to use moving average? <clears> hey, <throat> number one, first thing is to identify trends. <clears throat> So for me, my rule of thumb is if it is an uptrend, go long. Okay, unless there's a confirmation of a trend reversal. So how do I identify whether it is an uptrend or not? Okay, very simple. For me, if the 10 EMA is above the 21 EMA and the 21 EMA is above the 50 EMA, Okay, and all three lines are above the 200 moving average, okay, I go long, which means I will only look for opportunities to long because it is an uptrend. I don't want to trade against the trend. And I would recommend uh, new traders, okay, newbies, okay, not to trade against the trend. In other words, you trade with the trend. If it is an uptrend, you go long. Don't go short. Okay? Don't trade the pullbacks. Just follow the trend. <clears throat> okay, very simple. Uptrend, go long. Okay? And there's this area here, which I call the retracement zone. Okay? But this is the area between the 20. 21 EMA and the 50 EMA. Okay, basically the space between the blue and the red line. Okay, I call this the retracement zone. So this is where I will enter my trades. If let's say I want to go long, okay, I will wait for the price to come into my retracement zone or the retracement zones, okay, before I open a long position. <clears throat> All right. So this retracement zone acts like a dynamic support area for me. Get a space between the 21 and the 50 EMA. Okay. If it's a downtrend, I go short. So how to identify a downtrend? Very simple. Okay. The 10 EMA is below the 21 EMA and the 21 EMA is below the 50 EMA. And all the three lines are below the 200 moving average. Okay. So on a downtrend, I will only look for opportunities to short. The same thing, I will wait for the price to go into the retracement zone, okay, to open a short position. In other words, I'll open a short position here, here, and here. All right. So that's the first 
the first way to use uh, moving averages, okay, to use it to identify your trends, whether oh, is it a downtrend or is it an uptrend? Okay. Next, okay, I use moving averages to identify trend reversals. Okay, what is trend reversals? That means oh, the trend reverse from an uptrend to a downtrend or vice versa. Okay. So how do I use it? Okay, very simple. So when the 10 EMA crosses the 21 EMA, that's the first sign that the trend is coming to an end and serves as an early warning sign for traders. Okay. So whenever I see this happening, okay, the green line crossing above the blue line. Okay. So that's the first warning sign for me. Okay. It tells me that the trend could change from a downtrend to an uptrend. Okay. But I will not take any actions yet because that is just the first sign. Okay, I will wait for further confirmation, further signals. Okay, like what? Okay, like when the 10 or 21 EMA cross the 50 EMA. That means when the green and blue line cross the red line. Now, when that happens, that is a strong signal that the trend is ending, that this downtrend is ending. Okay, this could signal the beginning of a new uptrend. Okay, and the confirmation will take place when all the three EMAs cross the 200 moving average. Now that is a strong confirmation that the downtrend has ended. <clears throat> okay, so some traders may choose to enter a long position here. Okay. okay, some more conservative traders, they may choose to enter a position when they see all three lines crossing the red line. Okay. So you decide as a trader, where do you want to take action? Okay, in this case, where do you want to open a long position? Do you want to open a long position once the 10 and 21 EMA cross 50 EMA? Or do you want to open a long position only when the 50 EMA okay, cross the 200 MA? Okay. That means wait for all three lines to cross. Okay. You decide. Okay. Sometimes if you wait too long, okay, the opportunity may be gone. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes you make your decisions too early. Okay. The price reverse here. That means the price doesn't cross the 200 MA. It hits the 200 MA uh, moving average, it comes back down. Okay. So you decide as a trader where you want to take action. Okay, All right. <clears throat> okay, this is another example huh, of an uptrend. Okay, changing to a downtrend, right? First warning sign, when the green line crosses the blue line. Okay, when the 10 EMA crosses the 21 EMA. Okay, strong signal. Okay, when the 10 and 21 EMA cross the 50 EMA. Okay, confirmation comes when both the green and blue line cross the 200 MA and finally the 50 MA crosses the 200 MA. Okay. All right. Any questions regarding moving averages? That's how I use moving average. <clears throat> oh, hi, Adeline here. So the retracement zone is always uh, between the 10 and the 21, is it? Uh, no, 21 and 50. Oh, 21 and 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's always the same, right? Retracement zone. Yeah. Okay, Ken, thank you.
Anybody has questions regarding moving, how, how to use moving averages? Don't have? Okay, then let me continue. Huh? All right, Sorry, Kelvin. Yeah. Is there any difference like um, to using like, the, I notice you're using 21 EMA as opposed to 20 EMA. Uh, the last of, uh, like 10 and 50. Uh, I beg your pardon? Yeah, so the difference, I like, just want to know like difference between 21 EMA and 20 EMA because all the other EMAs are like 10, 21 and 20, 50, not much of a difference. So. 21 and 20, not much of a difference. It's just a personal preference whether you know 21 or 20. And, and likewise, how about the 9 EMA? Uh, like, uh, 9 is there any... also not, not much of a difference. But obviously, 9 and 20, yeah. there's, a, there's a huge difference. Yes. Uh, Okay, nine and ten, not much of a difference. Uh, you you, it's, you decide. Okay, it's, it's more, more or less the same. Okay, just small little difference, just a little, tiny bit of difference only. So of course the nine will move faster. We will react to price changes faster than the ten. Okay, but not much of a difference. And the simple moving average is um, lagging to the the exponential moving average, right? It's a slow moving one. Yeah, the moving at simple moving average is a slower moving average than the exponential one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, That's well, you can play around with your trading view. You know, you can you can see what's the difference between a 10 EMA and 10 MA, for example. Then you know the difference. Okay, like yeah, I said, basically the, the type is it open, close, or what? What? The EMA, they got open, they got closed. Don't care. Uh, what do you mean open or close? The option. There's the, oh, the settings. Uh. The source, yeah. The settings. Uh, don't don't touch the settings. Okay. Just change the, number. the numbers. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Honestly speaking, I also don't know what's the difference between close and open. <laughs> okay. Right. Just don't touch the, the, the other settings other than the numbers. Okay. Okay. If there's no questions, uh, let me move on to the next uh, technical indicators. Okay. Now, 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 um, now we are on to futures trading already. Okay. The earlier part of the the workshop uh, is is more to options. Yeah, so it's more to uh, spot trading, spot market trading. Okay. Now we are going into the finer details. Uh, of trading, okay. Using more technical indicators to get our entry point, to get the ideal entry point. <clears throat> okay. So next will be uh, MACD or, or what we call moving average convergence divergence. Okay. Uh, commonly known as the MACD. Okay. Not McDonald's, huh? Okay. <laughs> so. The MACD is a trend following momentum indicator okay, that shows the relationship between two moving averages of a securities price. The MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 period exponential moving average from the 12 period exponential moving average. That's how you get this, this line. Okay, the data points are, are, are gotten from this formula, subtracting this 26 period EMA from 12 period EMA. Okay, you don't need to know okay, how the calculations are done, right? You don't need to bother what it means. Okay. You just need to learn how to look at the MACD and, and use it in your trades. Okay, All right, anyway, as, as I mentioned, the points are calculated for you and plotted onto this. MACD, all right? So the MACD above the zero line is considered bullish, okay, uptrend. While below the zero line is considered bearish, okay? Uh, that means the price is going down, downtrend. So, when, so this is how the MACD looks like, and this is where the zero line is, okay, the zero line. 
So unlike the stochastic RSI, okay, the MACD is not, is not uh, uh, the MACD doesn't start from zero to hundred. Okay, All right. Remember the stochastic RSI? It starts from zero to hundred, correct? Okay, but the MACD doesn't, right? Is from the, the, the zero line to negative exponential and positive exponential. Okay, that means it has no it has no end. <clears throat> All right. So how to use the MACD? How to how to understand the MACD? Okay, firstly, as long as you see the MACD, which is the blue line, the red line is a signal line. Okay, this is very similar to the stochastic RSI. Remember the stochastic RSI? The blue line was the stochastic line, and the red line was the signal line. But in this case, the blue line is the MACD line, the red line is the signal line. As long as the MACD is above the zero line, okay, that means the, the price is considered bullish. It is going uptrend. If it's below, that means the price is going downtrend. Okay, it's considered bearish. Very simple, above zero line, bullish, below zero line, bearish. Okay, remember that. Okay. So, so, okay. Now, next. Okay, a bullish signal is present when the MACD line crosses above the signal line and is below the zero line. Okay, I repeat again. Huh? A bullish signal is present when the MACD line crosses above the zero line and it is below, you know, so it crosses above the signal line and is below the zero line. Okay, this is what we call a bullish crossover. Okay, when the crossover takes place, traders may look for confirmation of an upward trend by waiting for the MACD line to cross over the zero line before opening a long position. Okay. So how do you use a MACD line to trade? Okay, very simple. Okay. Some traders, when they see a bullish crossover, okay, that means the MACD line is below the zero line, okay, and a bullish crossover takes place, they will open a long position here. Okay, the conservative ones, they will wait for a confirmation. When the MACD line crosses the zero line, then they will open a long position here. Okay, or vice versa. Okay, when there's a bearish crossover, that means the MACD line crosses down, crosses below the signal line, and it is above the zero line, okay? They will open a short position. All right, okay? Then some traders, they will wait for a confirmation. They will wait for the MACD to cross below the zero line, then they open a short position. Okay? Any questions over here? Is it confusing or is it simple to understand? If you don't understand, please ask a question. Because the MACD is very powerful. If you know how to use it. I guess, Kelvin, if we compare the MACD to an RSI, uh, what are like the pros and cons of the MACD versus another um, momentum indicator? Like, like for example, I know of not stock RSI but normal, normal RSI, right? Which indicates the overbought and oversold region. So MACD is something similar by the looks of it. Okay, the the normal RSI is uh, the application is what I'm asking. Sorry. Again, what, I, I guess the application. I guess the application of MACD. Uh, in combination with the other stock RSI, that's where the most uh, application problems 
I've had so far. Uh, you mean you're talking about the MACD and the stochastic RSI? Uh, MACD combined with stock RSI combined, how to use effectively. Combine how to use effectively. Okay, don't worry about that later. I will explain to you okay. how to put everything together. Okay, now I'm going, I'm going piece by piece to explain to you all what the different indicators are and how, how they work. So later we'll put everything together. And, and when you say cross over the zero line, do you mean both uh, the signal line and the MACD line has to cross over the zero line? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. So far, so good, guys. Yes. Okay, come on, guys. Let's be more, more uh, act proactive. I know after lunch, everybody feels sleepy. That's why you all need to work your fingers by typing on the chat box or in the chat box or by unmuting yourself. Uh, don't fall asleep. Okay. So uh, this, this MACD, okay, this indicator is, is very good, uh, especially after a pump or a dump. <clears throat> okay. So whenever there's a pump or a dump, okay, let's say there's a pump, right? The price go up. Okay. I will wait for a bearish crossover, okay, before I short it. <clears throat> or after a dump, I will only wait for a bearish, a bullish crossover before I decide to long it. Okay, that's, uh, that's one, one way of uh, using the MACD, okay, for me. Okay, next, you see this colored bars here, the dark, dark, uh, the dark and light green, you know, the dark and uh, light red. Okay, these are what we call the histograms, the histogram bars, right? So the histogram bars represent the difference between the MACD and signal lines. When the market price is moving strongly in a direction, the histogram will increase in height. And when the histogram shrinks, it is a sign that the market is moving slower. As the bars on the histogram move further away from zero, the two moving average lines are moving further apart. And once the initial expansion phase is over, a hump shape will likely emerge. Or sometimes I call it the shark's fin. Okay, hump shape or a shark's fin. Well, it looks like a shark's fin to me. Huh? Okay. So this is a signal that the moving, so once you see this, Okay, the shark's fin or a hump. Okay, this is a signal that the moving averages are tightening again. Okay, which can be an early sign that a crossover is impending. So how to how to look at the histograms? Okay, very simple. Right. If the MACD is above the zero line, okay, that means it's bullish. It's an uptrend, okay? So if the histograms are in dark green, okay, that means the market is strong, is moving strongly in an uptrend. <clears throat> so as we know about momentum, it cannot remain strong all the time, okay? All right? Sometimes, it's, so once the price loses momentum, okay, what happens? The momentum will become weaker. Okay, that's how price action moves. Okay, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Same with momentum. Okay, it goes strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Okay, so as long as the MACD is above the zero line, okay, it's telling us that the price will continue to go up. Okay, but prices don't go in a straight line. Hey, it goes up, down, it goes up, down, up, down. But as long as 
the MACD is above the zero line, okay, you know that the price will continue to go up. Although, albeit it goes in an up and down cycle, okay? So normally, when you see this happening, okay, for example, okay, this happening, this happening, that means the price is moving up, but then it moves up, down, up, down, up, down, but on overall, it is on an uptrend. Okay. Same thing with uh, the red and, and pink bars. If the stochastic IS, uh, uh, if the MACD is below the zero line, okay, you know that the trend, the price is trending downwards. Okay. All right. And it will move like this down, up. Okay. But it's, it will move down, up, down, up, down, up. <clears throat> okay. And if you see this happening, very long uh, red lines, okay. This normally occurs after a dump. That means the price goes down very fast, very sharp. It goes all the way down. Okay. So when do you so when do we think that the price could come back up? Okay, once you start seeing pink bars, okay, you know, okay. The dump uh, is ending, okay, but it's still on a downtrend, okay. But the 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 strength of the the drop, okay, is is weakening, okay. Anytime it can come back up, so when it comes back up, okay, that's where we want to long long it, okay. I call this catching the 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 dump, catching the 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 bottoms, okay. After a long dump, we would want to catch the bottoms. But when do I enter? I don't enter here, 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 or here. I enter, I will enter when I see a bullish crossover. Okay. Because sometimes after a dump or a pump, okay, the price doesn't necessarily go back in the direction, the, in the opposite direction. Okay. Sometimes after a pump, there could be a second pump or a third pump. Same thing with after a dump, there could be a second or third dump. <clears throat> so if you assume that after a pump, there will be a dump, you go in, you open a short position, okay? If another pump comes in, that's it, you lose money. You get stopped up. So the experienced traders, they will wait for a confirmation. Okay, you always wait for confirmation of a crossover before you take action. These histograms, okay, is just a signal, it's just a sign to tell you that, okay, over here, okay, the price could be reversing after a dump. Okay, over here, the price could be reversing after a pump. But when do we enter? We enter when there is a confirmation that the dump has ended. Okay, questions? I know a lot of you don't trade this way, so you all better ask questions. The way I see your trade. After a pump, once you see a red candle, you, you open a short already. After a dump, once you see a green candle, you open a long already. That's how you are trade, uh, or, or most of you. Lah. So MACD is reliable for all time frames. Hey guys, all the indicators can be used for any time frame. Whether is it one minute or one hour or one day, and you use it the same way for all time frames. Guys, no questions, uh, MACD. Kelvin got fake breakout one or not? What do you mean fake breakout? Uh, that means uh, because this one also a bit laggy, right? So that means let's say it cross over all that, then maybe the histogram uh, pass a few already, but then you say there's a confirmation, right? But are there such instances where the MACD suddenly reverse one? 
I don't get you. What do you mean by suddenly reverse? Uh, that means, okay, so let's say it formed the shark, then it goes down, right? Mm -hmm. But after that, it does not go all the way down. It like kind of tilts back up. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Hmm? Of course. Then how to mitigate that? That's where you need to have a stop loss. Huh? Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, you got to remember, guys, like, uh, uh, like I always say, I always remember, the indicators are not 100% foolproof. Okay, generally, they are accurate, but not 100%. Okay? Okay. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Trading with indicators is better than trading without indicators. So that's the reason why we need to combine a few indicators to, to form a, a trading strategy. Okay. Just by using one indicator alone is not good enough okay? because they are not 100% accurate. That's why we need to combine, you know, like MACD, like Stochastic RSI, like um, moving averages okay? right. together to form a strategy to give a stronger signal. A, a, a more confirmed signal. So if uh, these multiple indicators are giving contradicting um, indication, mm -hmm. do we trade or do we For don't me, trade? No, I don't trade. I stay off the, the, the trade or the coin. I look for another one. I look for another coin. Kelvin, can we consider the MACD as a momentum indicator? It is a momentum indicator. By name, yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the histogram, different... sorry. Uh, the histogram uh, shade of the of the bar, for instance, light red, dark red, light green, dark green, right? Right. So these are the only four colors we have to study. Yeah, there are only four colors. Change of four, change of momentum, right? Okay, basically, I mean uh as we all know, green means bullish, right? Red means bearish. So if it's dark green, that means the, the, the market is moving strong in a bullish direction. If it's a light green, that means the market is moving slower, but still in a bullish direction or vice versa. And what about the size of the histogram, the bar? The bar size, is it like, let's say, can you have a big light green uh, bar next to a smaller dark green bar like does it yeah. give any contradicting signal there like like this right yeah kind of yes yeah. In the middle something in the middle yeah right. yeah so you just take an average line you know you get what i mean mm. right uh, or this example you see there's one uh, light green mm. right in between or so many dark green bars Okay, just take the average. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. And of course, uh, it also depends on what time frame you are using. You get what I'm saying? Okay, generally, um, generally, okay, this uh, I'll share with you how I use the MACD. Okay, later on, later when 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 we when I show you how I put everything together. Okay, you just understand right now okay, how to use the MACD and how to understand uh, what it means. Okay? When, this is at, when MACD is on the top, above zero line, that means it's bullish. Below zero line, that means uh, it's, it's bearish. Okay? When there's a crossover, bullish crossover, you, you, you open a long position. When there's a bearish crossover, you open a short position. Very simple. Okay, it may look, it may look complicated. Okay, but when you understand how to use it, it's, it's actually very simple. Okay, here long, here short. MACD above zero line is bullish momentum. MACD below zero line, bearish momentum. <laughs> That's it. That's very simple. All right, don't need to understand what all these numbers are, you know, and, and stuff like that. Okay, all right. Okay. Dark 
Colored bars means market is moving strongly. Light colored bars means market is moving slowly. That's all. That's all there is to know. Okay. Green bars means bullish, uptrend. Red bars means bearish, downtrend. That's it. Okay. Be simple, guys. Think simple. Okay. If no questions, I'll continue. Last call. MACD. Clear. Clear. If, if you guys are clear, please type clear in the chat box. If you're not clear, please ask questions. Hi, Kelvin. I have a question. Huh? Just mm -hmm. one. Um, if let's say I'm doing a bullish trade, right? Um, so uh, the MACD line crossing signal line, uh, you have to make sure it crosses on every time frame. Like for example, on a 15, one hour and four hour time frame, then I go along. No, no, no. Okay, you will get different signals if you if you look at all so many different different time frames. Okay, then in that case, right, let's say on the 15 and one hour time frame, the MACD line already crossed over the signal line, but four hour trade, uh, four hour time frame, it hasn't crossed yet. Yeah. Do I still go in for bullish trade on that? On those kind of scenarios or yeah, on a short term, on a short term, yeah, you go in because because a one hour chart is a is for you know, shorter, shorter term trade. Yeah. A four hour is, is longer. Yeah. So that means if let's say you want to trade uh you want to hold a trade longer, okay, on a longer time frame. Yeah. Okay, then you wait, you use the four hours and then you wait. Ah, uh, for it to cross over. Ah. Uh, okay, understood. Thank you. But some some impatient traders they will they will get in first. You know, they look at the one hour chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross over, but four hours heaven, no? They get in. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the next, but the next hour, the price happens to go back down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Lot, you get yeah, what I'm saying? I understand. So sometimes you need to be impatient and you need to decide whether you want to trade short term or long term or mid term or whatever. Okay. Uh, I always trade on a on a one hour chart. Oh, okay. I don't trade on a four hour chart as I mentioned. Okay, unless it is for spot trading. Okay, noted. Thank you, thank you. But that's me. Okay. I'm I'm not saying that you guys must follow me. All right. As I said, you have to come up with your own strategy. Okay, you have to decide what time frame uh that is no uh, what time frame chart is comfortable for you. Okay, I can't decide that for you. All right. But the principles are the same, okay, regardless of the time frame. Okay. So let me continue. Huh? I continue. And Galvin candlestick. <clears throat> so I'm sure you all remember what are, what are bullish and bearish and Galvin candlestick patterns, right? So I won't go into that. Okay, but the thing is, how to use these two candlestick patterns to trade? Okay, very important because engulfing candlestick patterns happen all the time. All right, all the time. So if you know how to trade just this one candlestick pattern, okay, you, I tell you, you can fly already. Seriously, I'm not kidding. All right. Okay. So, but the thing is by itself, okay, the pattern is limited to its effectiveness. Okay. Other indicators and tools can be used to complement this bullish or bearish engulfing pattern, okay, making the engulfing pattern stronger. In other words, trade the, trade the engulfing uh, candlestick pattern together with other, other uh, indicators and tools, like the horizontal or resistance levels, for example. Okay, so if you want to short uh, a position, okay, Wait, wait for a bearish engulfing uh, pattern, okay? Just after it bounced off from resistance, from a resistance level, okay, in this example. Yeah, even though this candlestick is more than three times uh, this, this, uh, this green candle over here, okay? As I said, some traders will still enter because this is still considered a bullish, uh, sorry, a bearish and galvin candlestick pattern. Okay, some some may not, some may just may just uh, give it up and go and look for another coin. Okay, 
but that's it. like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's still a bearish and galvin candlestick pattern, and the price just bounced off resistance. Okay, another example over here. Let's say you don't want to chase the, the, the price because this is too long. Okay, and your rule states that if the candlestick pattern is more than three times the smaller one, you are not going to go in. Okay, so you don't go in. You wait. Okay, you wait for another bearish and galvin candlestick pattern just below the resistance level. Okay, for like this, for example, the price comes down. Okay, this is a resistance, all right? Over here, this level. Okay, you draw a line. Okay, you make one horizontal line. Okay, uh, uh, okay initially, this line is, is acting as a support. Okay, a support. Okay, but the price break down. Okay, break down, it does a, a retest, and then you see a bearish and galvin candlestick. Okay, that is not more than three times the green candle. So when you see this, that's where you enter. Okay, this is a breakdown and retest, and a bearish and galvin candlestick. Okay, you open a short position. Same thing over here, okay? If you follow strictly to your uh, strictly to your rules, you won't be entering here because there's no bearish and galvin candlestick pattern. Okay, but however, can you see this pattern over here? This one, this one, this one, this one. What does it look like? Can you remember? If you can remember, please type in the chat box. This, this candlestick pattern, this one, this tree. Try, try, guys. Can you remember this tree pattern? One, two, three. What is the name of this pattern? No, this one should be evening star. Yep, it has something to do with a star. It's an evening star. Right. So if you if you forget if you don't remember this pattern is okay. Right. Okay. Continue to wait. Wait for a bearish and galvin candlestick pattern to enter. Yeah. This is an evening star. Remember the evening star. Okay. Remember the plus sign or, or the doji in the middle of two. Two candlesticks, okay, green and then red. So this is like a U-turn. You make a U-turn. Okay, it's an evening star. Okay. So if you know how to spot this this pattern, okay, you will start. You will you can enter a short position here. Okay. If you miss it, then you wait for a bearish and galvin candlestick pattern, and then you open a short position here. Oh, Kelvin, for the if let's say we enter a shot with this evening star, we mm. but won't it mean that uh, after slightly uh after slightly going down right, it surely goes up, isn't it? So isn't it like a very very short trade for this one? Uh, what do you mean very very short trade? Because you see after the evening star right, then it, it went down for a bit, then after it went up. Uh. Yeah. So the usually like here, ma. above resistance, ma. Oh, so 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 for this trade, we'll just like hold, uh, hold it for like your stop loss. You hold on. Why, why why do you want to exit when it hasn't hit your stop loss yet, right? Okay. Just hold hold until either it hit your stop loss, or it, it continue to go down uh, until it hit your TP uh. So obviously right. your stop loss will be here on top of resistance, right? Or the previous high. I don't know lah. I don't know where we, where you want to look for your previous high lah. Okay, it's either on top of resistance or the previous high. That's the rule of thumb. So yeah, unless the resistance will be here. Then unless you, unless you see another like break in structure, then it looks like it's going like uptrend. Then you exit lah. If not, you just as long as it doesn't hit your stop loss, you just keep it there lah. Correct. Yeah. In this case, is we we keep it here, and then obviously your TP will be somewhere below, right? Okay, depending on where is where's your TP lah. So you either wait until the either the price hit your stop loss or it hits your TP. Don't don't go and disturb the trade. I know some of you very itchy fingers. You know 
you see the price go up a little bit already. Oh, you 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 scared, no? <laughs> right. You close the deal manually. Yes, correct. All right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because I've done a lot of one-on-ones with you guys. Right. All right. Some of you, you know, scared, itchy fingers. <laughs> before before the price hit your stop loss, you go and close the deal. Yeah, you then close the trade. Okay, manually. And then after that, after you close the trade, you see the price go down and then you you <laughs> you eye one. <coughs> okay. Okay, anyway, that's that's another that's another story, right? So this is how you use a, a bearish and galving uh, candlestick pattern, okay, together with horizontal support and resistance levels. This is a, a longing example. Okay, previous one we are we are shorting. Now we are longing. So same. If you want to long, you look for a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. Right after the price bounce off support. Okay, the price come down, bounce off support. Okay, breakout. This is a breakout, right? A breakout and retest. So. Bullish and Galvin candlestick pattern. Enter again. Okay. So if it breaks out, we test again. You can enter one more time. Just like yes, uh, just like last night. I, I can't remember who. Uh, I don't know whether he's here or not. You see here, he said he entered the, the alchemic trade three times. He re-entered three times. Who's that guy? Uh? Is he here? Ah, fourth already. Uh? <laughs> Is it you, Amiru? <laughs> yes, okay. Fourth time, uh? champion. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, you know, if as the price is going up, okay, I know you guys know about dollar cost averaging, you know, when the price is going down, you keep buying. You know? Sometimes when the price is going up, you can also dollar cost average upwards. <clears throat> If you are very sure that the price will continue to go up, okay, you may want to add more position into the, the trade because you are very sure the price will continue to go up. Okay. You can do that. Okay, maybe you put, let's say, you put a thousand dollars here. Okay, then as the price goes up, okay, you are very, because there's a bullish and galving uh, pattern, okay. This is a signal that the price will continue to go up. You may want to add uh, add some more position into, into this trade. You may add another thousand dollars here. And then after, after a breakout and retest, you see another bullish and galving uh, pattern. Okay, you may consider adding some more position into this trade. <clears throat> okay, or you can just continue to hold. Okay, let's assume you entered here, right? Bullish and Galvin candlestick pattern, you enter. Okay. So where do you take profit? Obviously, we want to we want to hold our hold on to our trade as long as possible to make as much money as possible, right? We don't want to get out too early. Okay, imagine if you get out here, if you got out here, you miss all these profits. Right. And if the price continues to go up, some more you 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 miss even more profits. So how to hold onto a trade? Very simple. Just look at the charts, okay? For, for example, let's say in this example, in this case, there's a breakout, okay? And then there's a retest over here. Okay, once you see this retest, okay? You continue to hold, okay? But if the price were to break down over here, break down okay then you get out because if the price were to break down the support level most likely it's going to go down to the next support level so if you don't get out here okay right if you don't get out here if there's a breakdown the price will continue to go down all the way back to your entry so that's how i trade okay if there's no breakdown, I will continue to hold. And if I see a bullish and galvin candlestick pattern over here, I'll be very happy because 
when this happens, okay, more than 70% of the time, the price will continue to go up. So I'll just hold. Okay. I'll just wait for it to break the next, re next resistance level. Okay. Break out. And then see whether it comes down and we test or not. If it does, okay, then I will move my stop loss up to this level. Here. Okay. If I enter here, obviously my stop loss will be somewhere below. Okay. Then I will move it up to this level. Or I'll move it up to entry. Because I know the price 70% of the time it will continue to go up because there, there are these bullish candlestick patterns. Okay. So over here I will hold because it's a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. I will hold. Okay. And if if let's say the price continues to go up and come down, retest, and then there, there's another bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, okay. I know that the price will most likely continue to go up. Then I'll move my stop loss to the next level. And I will keep doing that until the price reverses, hit my stop loss, and then I'm out. So this way, I maximize my profit. I don't get out too early. And I, neither do I get out too late. Get what I mean, guys? Yes. If if y'all get what I'm talk, I I I I'm, I just mentioned. Okay, please type yes. If not, uh, ask questions. Uh, so, do you have to monitor when you say monitor it? Uh, do you uh, monitor it manually? Do yeah. Yes. Awesome. Any. So meaning that yeah, where I'm coming from is if this is like a late night trade, you probably might be stuck for a couple of hours, depending on the. Well, you can use. Uh, I mean, the best is to manual uh, to to monitor it manually, right? Or you can use limit orders to. to okay. Uh, I mean, you want to go to sleep now? You can use limit orders, like for example, uh, let's say there's a breakout here. Okay, you decide to go to sleep here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then you can put your, I mean, you can put your your stop loss is here, right? Or you can put your stop loss here, just in case it breaks down. If you hit your stop loss, you're out of the trade. Okay, yeah. you, make, you make this profit. Yeah, remember for one of your trades, you put multiple take profit points, TP one to TP five. Uh, that is, if you want to go to sleep, uh, So that one was manual, or was it limit orders? Uh, those are limit orders. Okay, cool. These are for you to set and then forget it, go to sleep mm -hmm. or, or, or go to okay. work or do whatever you want to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that limit order part would be. Yeah, if you have the time to monitor the, the trade manually, mm -hmm. then uh, mm -hmm. then you do what I, I, I just shared with you. You move your stop loss up accordingly, you know? Yeah, but meaning you'll have to wait for the candle to form because you're talking about the hourly chart, right? In this case, you probably need to wait for at least a couple of hours. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this is just an example, right? Not not mm -hmm. all not all charts are like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some uh, I mean, some trades on in a matter of hours, you can have a few bullish or bearish and galvin candlestick patterns. You know. Right. Yeah. This is just an example how I move my stop loss up. I don't just move anyhow. Okay. I will only move when I see. Things like this, so when there's a when there's a a retest, when there's a retest, it is this is something like higher lows. Okay, guys, do you all know what are higher lows and higher highs or lower lows, lower highs? If you if you understand, if you know what they are, please type yes. If you don't know, please voice out. So as long as there, as long as higher highs keep forming, okay, like for example, this high, okay, okay ignore this, this long week. Lah. Okay, this is definitely market manipulation. Okay, just ignore this for, for example, for, for now. Okay. Imagine this is a peak, lah. the peak is here. So this peak is higher than this peak. Right? 
So this is a higher height. And then this peak, this mountain peak is higher than this one. So this is higher than this. So this is considered a higher high, right? Then this is a higher high. This because this high is higher than this high. And then these are lows, right? So these are oh, this is also a low. So this low is higher than this low. So this is what we call a higher low. And this low is higher than this low. Okay, this is what we call a higher low. As long as higher highs and higher lows keep forming, okay, we know the price will continue to go up. Okay, as long as higher highs and higher lows are, are formed, okay, they keep forming. Okay, the price will definitely continue to go up. Okay. When will it come down? Okay, when will it reverse? Okay. I mean, besides using moving averages to tell us, uh, okay, we can use just the, 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 the lows and the highs to tell us okay, when the price may come down, okay? If there's a lower low being formed, that means higher low, higher low, higher low, okay? There's no more higher low. The next low is a lower low. Let's assume this low is a lower low. It's, it's somewhere here. It's below this low. So once you see lower low start to form and lower high start to form, okay? For example, in this case, this high is lower than this high. This high is lower than this high. Means once you see lower highs and lower lows start to form, okay, that is that is a that could be a signal that the price, okay, that the trend is changing, okay, from a high to a uh, from an uptrend to a, a downtrend. Okay, of course, if you add in other indicators, it'll be even stronger. Okay, but as long as you don't see any lower lows being formed. Okay, you just continue to hold onto the trade as long as possible until, until you see lower lows start to form and a lower high start to form. Okay, then you can consider getting out of the trade. Otherwise, just continue to hold. Okay, and you just move your, your stop loss okay, to the next higher low. The next higher low. Okay, the next higher low. Sorry, Kevin, can I ask you something? Yeah. Um, if let's say right like if we are on coins that are lower in volume right should we consider to use uh, like limit orders to stop loss right then we tri use a trigger so like maybe for example at the support line right we can use the trigger at the support line our exit is slightly below the slightly below the uh, support line is it better Wow. No, I'm at Asik's house. That's why. Okay, can you repeat again? Oh, okay. Hey, you close first, Hajj. Uh, okay, so right, if let's say like uh, the volume is very low, right? Because if volume is very low, then we, if we use like market stop loss, right? Wait, Harvey, are you in a cave? We may not, our order may not get, eh, uh, sorry, if we use limit stop loss, right, our order may not get filled if our trigger is too close to our stop loss. Nah. So if let's say for volume, which is lower, right? Uh, it is better to put the trigger earlier, right? Wow. Bro, can you type in the chat box? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> I can read your question. Type in the chat box. <laughs> okay, I'll answer later because your question is a bit confusing. Okay, type in the chat box. Let me let me read and understand what are you trying to ask. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh. All right. <clears throat> No questions, I move on. Okay. Same thing with uh, 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 trend lines. Okay, you can also use trend lines together with uh, the engulfing pattern okay, to trade. It works the same, it works the same way as, uh, as the horizontal support and resistance line. Okay. So it's very simple, right? Draw a trend line. If it's a downtrend, remember we trade with the trend. Okay, so on a downtrend, we only look for uh, opportunities to short. So where, where do we short? Well, we short 
at the resistance. If the price bounces off the resistance, okay, it doesn't break through. It bounces off. It bounces back down. Okay. So when it bounces back down, okay, once you spot a bearish and galvanic candlestick pattern, okay, just enter. Okay, in this example, right? Okay. Okay. Another example in this case is an uptrend. Okay, when do you long? Okay, when the price bounces off the support trend line. Okay, you draw a line. Okay, wait for the price to come down. See whether it bounces off or not. If it bounces off and you see a bullish and galvanic candlestick pattern in this, like this example, you open a long position. Okay, or you keep holding onto the trade. Let's say you entered here, for example, okay, or, or somewhere below, right? As long as you see the price come down, hit support, and there's a bullish and galvanic candlestick pattern, you continue to hold. Okay, hold until when? until you see a breakdown, like this example over here. Okay, if, if you extend this line all the way here, okay, you will see that this candlestick pattern has broken through the support trend line. So this is where you exit because the candlestick pattern closes below the trend line. Okay, or this one, or this candlestick pattern. Okay, this one definitely close below the trend line. So this is where you get out. No, don't hold anymore. Okay, don't hold and hope that hope that uh, this, this price will, will give you 100% or 200% or 300%. <clears throat> okay, I, I know that's how most of you are trading now. You are aiming, you, are, you keep aiming for the 100%. Am I right, guys? If I'm right, put yes in the chat box. You want to hope, you want to aim for the 100%. Come on, guys, be honest. Don't, don't lie to me. <laughs> okay, y'all always want to aim for the 100%. 10% no? in profit, y'all don't want to exit. You want to hold. Hold until the thing make a U-turn, hit your stop loss, then you're happy. Then you come one, get out of the trade, right? Yeah, I've done a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one so far with you, with, with you guys. Okay? A lot of you, most of your losing trades, okay, they were they were once winning trades. But because you all hope, but because you guys held on to it. Because it is only 10% or 20% or, or 30% up. Okay? You don't want to sell. And then it makes a U-turn and hit your stop loss. Then finally you get you are out of the trade at a loss. So 30% profit you don't want to take, you want to lose 10% or 20% or 30%. If 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 that is you, okay, be honest, type yes. <laughs> be honest, guys. I've been, I've, I've been there, done that, so I know. Okay. So guys, <clears throat> trade according to what you see on the chart, not what you want. Okay, I know everybody wants 100%, 200%. I want 1,000%. Okay, but if the chart doesn't give you that, you have to accept it. Okay, like for example, like... This, this, this increase may only be 10%, for example, okay? It may, or it may only be a 20% profit, okay? okay? But if there's a breakdown, you have to get out, that means you have to get out, even if this is only 5% profit or 10% profit. You get what I'm saying, okay? Don't be greedy. Greedy is an emotion. Okay, leave your emotions out of a trade. You trade according to what you see on a chart and you trade according to your rules. Okay, my rule is 
if there's a breakdown in this case, I'm out of the trade, done. Okay? If it's only 20%, I will take it. If it's only 10%, I will take it. Because if I don't take it, okay, the price may continue to go down because it is a breakdown. Okay? It may go down all the way to my entry or worse, beyond my entry and it hit my stop loss. Which happens to a lot of you, I'm very sure. Okay, All right. Your trade was a winning trade, but because you were greedy, right, you end up losing. So I'd rather take a 20% profit than lose 10%. You get what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Hi, Kevin. Yes. Yeah, I'll stay here. Okay. okay. Wait, suddenly also quiet. <laughs> okay, for, for this case, I you see me? No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> suddenly also quiet. All, all must be all must be wondering how I know. <laughs> okay, the uh, sometimes I will ask you about uh even though it's green ready, yeah. Uh, uh you didn't you didn't move your SL to to break even, but you put it slightly above because you feel that it will go, it might come back a bit higher first before going down some more. So actually what is like, are there like, uh, what make you see that like uh, it will not, it might go up a bit before coming down again? Uh, back uh, pardon. <laughs> okay, because uh, sometimes when you post, uh, like yesterday, the, when you take for example the AC, ALCX yesterday, uh-huh. Yeah, so after it passed the after it went into the first red candle down. Uh, so from at first your SL was quite high. You move it slightly lower, but you didn't put it straight to break even. You put it uh it was still above the break even point. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh the last time I asked you that you said that it's because you feel that it will it mm -hmm. will not uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think the rest understand what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so what is your question actually? <clears throat> no, uh, my question is how do you know? Know what, you feel... where to put my stop loss? Yes, why when because sometimes you you say uh, normally like you try to put our stop loss uh, as early eh, move it to break even as early as possible. Okay, actually, guys, uh it's up it's up to you where to move your stop loss. There's no hard and fast rule. Okay, let's say for example, for example, uh my stop loss is here, for example, lah, okay. As the price moves up until here, let's say for example, okay. I could put my stop loss here or I could let my stop loss remain at ent entry. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Kelvin, are we here? Yeah. I asked you. Uh, and dialing up to you, you guys. Then if this is the case, right? Usually, right, if let's say for trend line uh, resistance uh, or support levels uh, versus the horizontal support and resistance, which one will you choose? both how uh okay like both if let's say the both is like very far away like for example like you see the last trend line ideally between, both like, la, you know ideally both then if let's say if it's too far away then you will just pick one la, correct pick one the nearest one the nearest one to the current market price or unless it's near then you will just pick like just below both la. yeah understand okay all right so to, to answer the earlier question, where, where to move my stop loss, I say it depends on uh, traders. Okay. No, actually, uh, like how you normally feel like it it might retrace a bit first before going down. How I normally feel. Uh, this one, yeah. It's a bit difficult to answer this question because it's based on experience. I mean, when you when you trade long enough, you somehow develop a sixth sense, you know, whether the, the price will continue to go up or down. I mean, I'm not always right. Okay, but uh, most of the time I'm right because of experience. It's, it's nothing that can be taught. 
unfortunately. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but what I can teach you is uh, what traders normally do. Okay. They trade with a set of rules. For example, okay, some traders, they will move their stop loss to two previous lows be uh, two previous lows from the current market price. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, let's say the current market price is here. Uh, 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 is here, okay? Let's say it's here. Lah. So obviously this is one previous low, this is two previous lows, correct? So, they, so what they do is they will wait until the price is somewhere here, then they move the stop loss to this previous low. That means the stop loss will always be two previous lows away from the current market price for some traders. Some traders will only, some traders will use only one previous low. That means if the price is here, if there's a lower, if there's a, 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 a lower, a higher low here, they will move the stop loss here. That means the stop loss is very close to the current market price for some traders. Okay, because the stop loss is only one previous low away from the current market price. So it depends on you. Okay, do you want to move your stop loss two previous lows away or one previous low away or three previous lows away? It's entirely up to individual. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So, of course, for me, if let's say, um, if let's say this profit is already more than hundred percent, okay, I'm already in profit more than hundred percent. I'm satisfied, more than satisfied with my profits. Okay, then I may move my stop loss closer to the previous low. Uh, sorry, closer to the current market price, because the the nearer the stop loss is to the current market price, the easier you get stopped out. You you get what I mean? So if I'm happy with my profit already, okay, I don't mind moving my stop loss closer to my uh, closer to the current market price. Okay. But if let's say I want to make a lot of profit from this, this trade, let's say I'm very confident that, uh, that this, this uh, particular trade is going to go to the moon, for example. Okay. And right now it's only 20% profit, not enough because I know it can go to 100. It's just a matter of time. Okay then I won't put my stop loss too close to my to the current market price because I don't want to get stopped out and then the price continue to go up without me. So I will keep my stop loss further away from the current market price. But it will always be below a previous low or below a support. Now that is the rule that cannot be changed. But which previous low, which support, okay, you decide. It can be maybe two or three supports away from the current market price. Or it could be, as I mentioned, two or three previous lows away from the current market price. But it must always be below a previous low or below a support. That is how I determine where to move my stop loss. Do you understand? And I hope my explanation is simple enough for you guys to understand. If you don't, Please ask question. Come, please ask. <clears throat> only, only three people understand the rest. Ooh, hello, guys. Lost already <laughs> or concussed. Okay, um, guys, don't, don't go to sleep. Huh? <laughs> don't go to sleep. Yeah, I know sleepy. I, I also feel a little bit sleepy, especially after lunch. So don't go to sleep. <clears throat> there are more exciting things behind. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, after lunch, in fact. <laughs> okay, so... All right. Next will be uh, using moving averages together with your engulfing patterns. Okay, to trade. Okay, remember the retracement zones. 
I was talking about earlier, remember moving using moving averages to trade. So as I said, this retracement zone will act as a dynamic resistance area for me because this is a downtrend. Okay. So on a downtrend, we only look for opportunities to short. So, so instead of drawing diagonal trend lines, okay, diagonal resistance trend line, we can use the moving average as a reference point for us to enter the short position. So how do we do that? Very simple. Wait for the price to go into the retracement zone, look for a bearish engulfing pattern, and then short. Right? In this, like this example, open a short position at this retracement zone. Okay, or long. Okay, if it's an uptrend, wait for the price to come down to the retracement zone. Look, look for a bullish and galvin pattern. Okay, and then open a long position. Right over here, you can do that. Over here, if you want to, you can do that. Although this candlestick is three times more than this. Right, it depends. On, it depends on your your own rules. Right, or if you don't want, you don't like this, then you can open a long position here. You see a bullish and galvin pattern over here, just bounce off the retracement zone. Okay, one thing to note, uh, don't have to be super accurate. No? It has to be in the middle or inside the retracement zone. Sometimes just touching the blue line is okay. Because this is still, this is a, still a, a, a support, dynamic support area. All right. So that's how you use uh how, how you this this is how you trade using the the engulfing pattern together with uh your trend lines and moving averages. Hey Kelvin, even though the wick just enter into the retracement zone, it would do also is that you don't have to wait for the close to be at the retracement zone, right? Mm, yep. Because this is a one hour chart. If let's say you zoom into a one minute chart, uh, this thing would have entered the retracement zone already. Agree? Oh. Right, this is a one hour chart. So if let's say you were to zoom into a, a let's say 30 minute chart, that means over here you will see two candles. So definitely the price would have entered the retracement zone and then bounce up. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Okay, any questions regarding using uh, uh, engulfing patterns to trade? If not, let's move on. Can we have one more question? Uh? <laughs> Once we draw the trend line, uh, we have to stick with the trend line. Huh? Can we change the trend line as we go along? <laughs> How are you going to change the trend line as you go along? Because more candlestick is being formed, law, so the trend line may be Then you drawn. draw another trend line. Oh, but the old one still exists. Lah. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the old one of course still exists because it's still a trend. You don't you don't take you don't remove that trend and then change to another trend. You know, just draw another trend line to have okay, a better picture. Okay. To have a better picture of the whole situation. Yes. Yeah, but normally one one line is enough for you to 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 trade already. One you know what I mean? Don't have to draw. Don't have to keep changing the trend line. Yeah, and, and 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 remove and remove the previous trend lines that are not relevant to your present trade. Okay, some some of you I see your chart now, so many lines now. I <laughs> see also I confused. <laughs> okay, so those lines that are not relevant anymore, remove them. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So entry point and stop loss. Okay, where do you set your entry point and where do you set your stop loss? Okay, so this is also a strategy by itself. Yeah, in fact, it's an art. Okay, where to put your stop loss, where to put your entry point. Okay, so how to, how, so where to put or how to put. Okay, so generally, <clears throat> for trading uh, engulfing candlestick patterns, okay, this is how I enter and, and put my stop loss. Okay, so let's say it's a downtrend. Okay, the trend is coming down. Okay, I spot a bullish engulfing pattern. Okay, I will enter. But where do I put my entry? 
Okay, it will be slightly above the wick of the green candle. And where do I put my stop loss? Okay, it will be slightly below the wick of the green candle or the previous low. Okay, but normally if let's say this is at the bottom of a, of a downtrend, okay, this will most likely be the bottom, the stop loss or the previous low. Because this is a U shape or a V shape. So the V shape, the end of the V is very close to the entry. Okay, most of the time. Okay. But you won't know it's a V shape until the, the other two candles are formed. The last two candles are formed. So it, it is a V shape like that. We, I don't need these two candles. When I see a bullish and Galvin candle, okay, I am I enter here. I have to put my stop loss already, all right? Without these yeah. two candles okay. appearing. So okay. where am I gonna put my stop loss? Uh, here lah. Because this is like a, this is the end of it. There's no more previous low unless I go further to the left. You get what I'm saying? Uh, do, do you get what I mean? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. All right. So same thing, uh, this, uh, the opposite is true for a, 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 a short position. All right. At the end of an uptrend, if I see a bearish and galvin pattern, okay, my entry will be slightly below the candlestick pattern. Uh, sorry, below the wick. Okay, my stop loss will be above the wick because that will most likely be the top. Okay, in this case, what in FTX, okay, what I can do is I will, no choice. I cannot, you cannot put a limit order if you want to trade this way. That means you need to put a buy, no, sorry, a sell stop limit order here or a buy stop limit order. You cannot put a buy limit. Okay, because if you put a buy limit order, the order will be executed immediately, which I don't want. Okay, I want it to be exit. I want it to be filled only when the next candlestick goes above here. Because if it goes above this point, okay, it's like a breakout. So as we know, when price breaks out of a uh, resistance, okay, generally it will continue to go up. Right? When price breaks down a support, generally it will continue to go down. So I want to put my entry below the candlestick. I'm not going to enter here, 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 or here. I want to enter outside the candlestick. Okay, outside, not inside. Later, I'll explain to you why. Do you all get this clear or not first? If, if no, please ask question. If not, Kevin, on the... Yep. On the bearish engulfing candle, uh, this is engulfing, uh, even though the red one doesn't cover the whole of the green body. This one? Yeah. No, it's bigger than this. Uh. It's, it, it engulfs. Uh. Right? Oh, so long as it's bigger, uh, it doesn't have to like be longer and, and it covers the opening of the green candle. Now, we look at the body. We don't we ignore the wicks. So, obviously, this yeah, body correct. is bigger than this one, right? So, it doesn't need to be was so so big like it engulfs completely as long as it's bigger than the the left candle that's called engulfing oh okay okay thanks my concept was it has to cover the whole green body oh you mean not like that la. yeah no. correct 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 so it's not necessary as long as it's bigger than this one okay, okay? all right <clears throat> okay so this is an example of, of uh, how you would trade the, uh, uh, the engulfing pattern, okay? where to enter and when to exit. Okay, let's say for example over here, okay, you spotted a bullish engulfing pattern. Okay, you enter slightly above the candle, that's your entry, and your stop loss is the previous low. Okay, in this case, it's this candlestick, okay, which is very close to the end of this candlestick anyway. Okay, this is your stop loss. This is your entry. And you can see that the, the stop loss is very tight. Okay, but because you are trading and, and uh, uh, it's almost like a breakout. So most of the time, your stop loss will not be hit. As you can see from this example, three entries, three stop loss, not even close.
Okay, so why do I enter here above the candlestick pattern? Okay, because sometimes, let's say if I'm wrong, okay, the, the price doesn't continue its upwards movement. Okay, the next candle, let's say the next candlestick over here is a red one. That means I'm wrong with my analysis. Instead of going up, the price comes down. To come back down. So what happens? If that's the case, my entry will not be filled, right? Because my entry is above the candlestick, this candlestick. But the next candlestick that opens is a red one and it comes down. So it will not be filled. I'm wrong. My analysis is totally wrong. Okay? But then no damage done because my entry is above this candlestick. If I enter in the middle here, okay? And if I'm wrong with my analysis, the next candlestick is a red one, it comes down. I get stopped out because I entered here, 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 or here, or whatever, wherever. You get what I mean? Uh, Kelvin, Harvey here. Hmm. Hey, Kelvin, then like that, isn't it better to enter slightly above the open instead? Because if you enter like that, right, then if the next candlestick is red color, lah, for example, yeah. usually there will be like buy and sell, like hovering at the, the opening price. Lah, then like that, your entry won't it get filled. No. As long as the candlestick doesn't go above your entry, it will not be filled. Yeah, because your entry is at opening or slightly above opening. No, on top of the week. Slightly above the opening. Uh, there's a week. Lah. I see, I see. Okay. That means if there's a week, above. Lah. I mean, if there's no week, then above the, 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 the close of the candlestick. Lah. I mean, this is open, this is closed. Mah. This is a green candle. Mah. As long as the entry is above the candle. Do you have like how many percentage above the candle? Uh, no. Aga, aga. <laughs> of course, not too far. Lah. Not too far. You know what I mean? Um, Kelvin, uh, Rita here. Uh, uh, just now you said for this kind of uh, bullish uh, engulfing candle, you use a buy stop limit, right? Yeah. So that there's this limit price and trigger price. Your trigger price is your is the one that you draw here, entry, is it? Uh, okay, this is just an example. Of course, the trigger price will be below the limit price. So let's say the entry is how much? Uh, 0. 0 0.3875, right? So slightly above the candlestick would be, let's say, uh, 0 0.388, eight, eight, for example. Uh -huh. Okay, so your trigger price, you can put at 0 0.388, and then your limit price, 0 0.3881. Okay. okay. Slightly yeah. above the trigger price. Okay, okay, but if it's so tight, right, then um, will is there any uh, case where the price shoot up, but but then you never okay, trigger you this? Get, yeah, you get feel lah. So so try not to put too tight. Neither do you put too loose. Anyway, like I said, it's a matter of practice and experience. Okay, but the 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 strategy is as long as you put your entry above the candlestick, not in not below, not inside, not within. That's can oh, that's the strategy, including above the week. The stick, above the week. Okay. How much above up to you? You decide. As long as it's above and not within the candlestick. Okay, this is what this strategy is all about. Okay, mm -hmm. because I don't want to be caught out if I'm wrong with my analysis. You get what I'm saying, guys? Yep. I hope you all understand. This strategy is so that you are not caught out, your entry is not filled if you are wrong. If you think that the, remember, doesn't mean that there's a bullish and galvin pattern, confirm guarantee 101%, the price will go up. Remember, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it will come down. The next candlestick could be a red one, a long red one. So if that's the case, I don't want to enter, I don't want to get my entry filled. Okay? Because if that's the case, definitely I'll be stopped out. So that's why I open a position above the candlestick so that if I'm wrong, my entry will not be filled. Okay, no damage is done. So all I need to do is just like cancel the order. Okay, and then wait for the next opportunity to enter. 
Then I'll do it again. Let's say I, over here, I'll do it again. I'll entry at above the candlestick. Okay. If the next candlestick is a green one, good. Okay, my entry is filled. Almost immediately, I'm in profit. Okay. And I, if I want, I can move my stop loss to entry already immediately. And this trade is safe. Okay. But if I'm wrong, how? The next candle is a, green, uh, it's a red one. It comes back down. It makes a U-turn from here. Now my entry is not filled. So no damage is done. Yeah, I just simply go and cancel the order. Right. You get what I'm saying? But, but Hall, there's a possibility of the candle opening higher than your entry level and then closing down below your green body or mm -hmm. even in the middle of the green body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a possibility. Like, like, let's say that like this, for example. Okay. But as long as it doesn't hit your stop loss, you're okay, right? Do we do at the 58, 59 minute of the hour? Uh, yeah, that means almost Very close, almost close, the end of the, uh, yeah, of okay. The, of the time frame, whatever, let's say if it's four hours, uh, no? mm. or if it's a daily, okay, daily, daily, no need to trade like that, uh, daily, like I say, you use the daily chart, you don't have to be so specific, so accurate. Okay, now we are trading futures as I, as I, as I mentioned, okay, a 1% move could be a 20% uh, win or loss, mm. depending on the direction. So I want to be specific, you get what I'm saying? Mm. I want to be really, really, you know, yeah, Good. right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's a different way of trading from uh, spot trading. Okay, futures trading for me, lah, for me. I trade differently uh, from, from spot. Okay, because I'm playing with leverage and I'm playing with a uh, uh, huge amount of money. Okay, so this is this is the strategy which I use. And most of the time I'm correct. If you look at these three examples, as I said, the price is nowhere near your stop loss. Okay, once it goes up, it goes up. You're in profit already. Then just move your stop loss to entry. That's it. Okay, your trade is safe. And most of the time, you can see it continues to go up. Right, over here, the next candlestick open. Okay, green. Your entry is filled. Okay, immediately move your stop loss to entry. Even if you uh, once you move your stop loss to entry, you can see it hardly comes back to touch your entry. It hardly make, makes a U-turn huh? and you get stopped out at entry. I mean, if you get stopped at entry, so be it. It's okay. Right? Break even. There's other opportunities down the road for you to get in. Okay? Not, it's not always huh? the thing will come down and hit your entry. Sometimes it will just continue to go up. But at least you don't lose. If you are wrong, if let's say it suddenly makes a U-turn, it hits your stop loss at entry, you get stopped out at break even, better than lose, right? Okay. So enter here, entry get filled. Once it goes up, one or two candles take, move your stop loss to entry. Happy. See, look at the profit. So you decide where you want to take profit. So how to decide? Very simple. Draw a trend line. Okay, my rule is draw a trend line. Once the price cuts, okay, break down from the trend line, I'm out. I don't care whether is it one or two percent or 10 or 20 percent or 100 percent. That's my rule. I trade according to what I see on the chart. So obviously, if let's say this is the case, I will draw a trend line like you know, a, draw, a, a, a support trend line. Most likely, I'll, I'll get out from here lah, because it breaks down. Then I'll wait for another opportunity to trade. If let's say I spot another opportunity, so same thing, entry above the candle, stop loss below. Okay. Once I'm in profit, I move my stop loss up. Okay. And as you can see, in this case, if I did not take profit here, okay, over here, I would have gotten stopped out at entry. Okay. No win, no lose. It's fine. Because what happens next is this point is lower than this point. Okay, if I if I had not moved my stop loss to entry, I would have gotten stopped out here and I would have made some losses. You get what I'm saying? Right. So this is another opportunity for me to enter. Okay, so let's assume I I stopped out at break even. Okay, this trade, okay, waste time. Never mind. Didn't at least I didn't lose any money. I got another opportunity to enter here. 
Okay, entry here, stop loss here. Okay. So enter. Once it is in profit. Okay, if I move my stop loss to entry early, I would have gotten stops out here. Okay. But if I did not move too early, I may have caught these profits here. So anyway, even if I move my stop loss to entry here, I get stopped at entry, I don't lose. Okay, in this trade, at least I make money here. Right? I made money here, I didn't lose, I didn't lose. Overall, I still make money. And my, my, and my uh, trade is 100% win rate. I don't lose a single time in these three trades. I mean, that's, that's how I trade. Okay, because I want to win more than I lose. I hate getting stopped out at, at a loss. I don't mind getting stopped out at big even, but I hate getting stopped out at a loss. So that's why I always emphasize, uh, encourage you guys to move your entry to stop loss as, no, to move your stop loss to entry as soon as possible, once you are in profit, to protect your trade. Okay, another example, uh, shorting, right? Same, if let's say you see a bearish and galvin pattern, you move your uh, entry below the candlestick, stop loss above. Okay. What you see next is the green candles. Ah, so in this case, your order will not be filled. Okay, it will only be filled on the second candlestick because it breaks down. Okay, so if let's say you move your stop loss to entry here, right? Well, you get stopped out here at break even. Okay, but if you keep your stop loss here, okay, uh, your stop loss will not be hit and you get to earn all this profit. So, but if let's say you get stopped out here at entry, well, there's always another chance for you to, to open a short position again, right? So same thing, the next candles is a green one. So it will not be filled. It will only be filled on the second candlestick because you see this week, okay, it touches your entry. Okay, it's, your entry is filled, right? And then what happens next is, you know, the price just continue to go down. Okay. If let's say like you, you sway sway again, huh? you get stopped by an entry again because you move your stop loss to entry too fast, right? Never mind, there's always another opportunity to trade. So guys, don't worry. Even if you get stopped by an entry, there will always be an opportunity for you to get back in again. It may not be, it may not be on the same day, it could be two or three days later, or it could be uh, a few hours later. Okay, doesn't matter. You will always have a chance to get back into the trade. Okay, so I would rather get stopped out at entry than stopped out at a loss. You get what I'm saying? Hello, guys. Yes, no? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Remember now, now you guys are trading with small amounts of money. Okay. 10 to 20% profit to you. You know, you will feel that hey, no meat. <laughs> no meat, huh? It's too little. Probably that 10 to 20% is only uh, I don't know, a few tens of dollars or a few dollars only. Right. Okay. So you don't feel the 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 the, the money. Okay. But Imagine if let's say that 10 to 20% is a few thousand dollars. Okay. Right. Imagine if you are trading, you know, if you are putting in tens of thousands of dollars in a trade instead of a few tens of dollars or a few hundred dollars. Okay. Right. So that 10 to 20% could be a few thousand dollars. Okay. And I'm sure. You, I'm, I'm sure you guys are not going to trade with such small amounts of money forever, right? Right. Sooner or later, you will want to scale up. Sooner or later, you will want to, you know, when you, when you are more confident, when you know what you're doing, okay, you will, you will want to start to trade uh, using more capital so that you can make more money. Right. So you need to, you know, develop 
good trading habits now. Now, okay. That means don't hold on to your trade for too long. Don't be greedy. Okay. If you are in profit, ten to twenty percent. Okay. Once you are in profit, let's say ten or twenty percent, immediately move your stop loss to entry, and protect your trade so that you don't lose. Right. If the trade were to were to to go against you, and then take some profit at the twenty percent mark. Right now, it could be a few dollars because you are trading with small amounts of money. But as I said, sooner or later, you guys will be trading with huge amounts of money. So that 20% could represent a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. Okay. So cultivate that kind of habits now when you are, when you are still a baby. Not cultivate that kind of habits when you start to trade with huge amounts of money. By the time it could be too late, you know habits are difficult to change. I I I think y'all will agree with me. Right. So right now, cultivate good habits. Okay. Just uh, think like a like like a hedge fund manager. Okay. Treat yourself as a hedge fund manager. You, you tell yourself you are trading with huge amounts of money. You are managing a multi million dollar fund. Each fund you each time you go into a trade is in the tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. You cannot afford to, to, to make mistakes because you're handling large amounts of money. Right? And you cannot afford to be greedy. Once you're in profit, quickly protect your position. Why? Because the position is worth a few tens of thousands of dollars or a few hundred thousand dollars. Okay, just a 1% drop could be 20% if you're using a, a 20x leverage. And if your trade is $10,000, that 20% is 2,000, no? 2,000 bucks, no, guys. Right? If your trade is $100,000, that 20% is 20,000 bucks. Just a 1% drop. So do you want to protect your position as soon as possible or do you want to... Ho, ho, hopefully 100%, then you get out. Okay, you decide yourself, okay? Right? Yeah, I've been through that. Okay, I've lost a lot of money doing what you guys are doing now. That's why I changed my trading habits. Okay? Right. So that's why I always emphasize when you are up 20%, okay, take some profit there, move your stop loss to entry. You're safe. Okay. If the price continue to go up, good. Clap your hands. If the price suddenly make a make, make a U-turn, hit your stop loss at entry, you get out. At least you are still in profit. Right? You took some profit at 20%. Keep doing that. Okay. And then you will you will consistently have winning trades. Okay. So this is what this strategy is all about. Any questions, guys? I mean, this is how I trade. Like I said, y'all can follow, y'all can don't follow. It's up to you. You eventually you come up with your own strategies. Okay, questions here, guys. <clears throat> Hi Kelvin, can you explain the 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 um like trigger limit order and stop limit order what are the worry, differences later, between later, later don't worry about that i will cover that later <laughs> okay guys uh no if no questions let's uh have a toilet five minutes toilet break now is 4 23 shall we come back at 4 30 okay Let's have a short toilet break. Okay, if you have any questions uh, later, well, when I come back, you can ask me. Okay, so see you guys later.
Okay, I'm back. Okay, guys, any questions before I continue? Uh, what do you mean, uh, Yong? Yong, what do you mean uh, we don't set TP up front in FTX and manually monitor to TP? Okay, Young, if you can speak up, I think speaking up is better. Okay, uh, this, okay, I answer your previous question, right? Uh, you asked this strategy is used for minimum one hour timeline. Okay, it's used for any timeline. Any time frame, sorry. Okay, whether it's four hours, one hour, one day, one minute. Okay, it's all the same. All right, Harvey, going back to your question. Harvey, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Here, here. Pleasure to be in. Okay. Uh, stop loss for tokens for with lower volumes when placing. I, I think just now you answer already. Uh, answer already, yeah. <laughs> okay. Accidentally answer, la, but still consider. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, mean, also, I don't understand your question. No. <laughs> No, as in like, as in like, because you know the trigger, right, is to put the 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 order inside the order books, ma. Yeah. So if the volume is very low, right, then if you don't put, like, at a decent place, ah, then it's very hard for us to get our orders filled when it's when it hits our stop loss, ma. Right. Yeah. So I was asking like for yourself, like, just now because you were talking about like putting the thing at the support and resistance line, ma. So I was thinking like, if let's say the volume is low, ah. And then we want to put like maybe slightly below the resistance line. Then maybe you can put the trigger at the support line so that it will trigger the order first. And then oh, when no, no, maybe no. It's... Okay. not not at the support line, it's either above or below. Never at the trigger. Eh? Yeah, never at. Also, even for the trigger, also below the support and above. Yeah, at least for me, lah. Okay. I mean, at least uh, for me. Right. I see, I see. I, I never put exactly at the 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 support or resistance. It's either above or below, depending on whether I'm longing or shorting. Understand. Mm. Okay. So, hope everybody is back. If you're back, please yell back. Back. Again. <laughs> or if you're shy, just type back. Huh? Back. <laughs> yeah, let's... let's Let's wake up, everybody. Wake up. <coughs> okay, so now the ultimate strategy, combining them all. Right? Remember, we don't just use one indicator or one... Uh, uh, we don't just, just use one indicator, okay? Try to use all of them. Okay, Combine them all into... a. a a trading strategy because each indicator by itself okay it's not strong enough because it is not 100% accurate right but if you combine it with other indicators okay your calls your 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 entries become more accurate right so how to come how, how do i normally trade okay, this is how i trade let's say for a short setup okay that means uh it's downtrend right as long as the, the, the 10 EMA is below the 21 and the 21 is below the 50 EMA and all three are below the 200 MA, I go short. So how do I go short or when do I enter? Okay. That's when all the indicators come in. 
Okay, so I will enter when I see this. Okay, the price is at the retracement zone, bearish and galvin candlestick pattern. Okay, that's the first tick in my box. Okay, but that's not enough. Okay, I will also look at the stochastic RSI. Is it going down? Or is it going up or, 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 or is it going sideways or whatever? Okay. I will want it to go down like this example. Okay. Curving going down into the blue zone. All right. But that is still not enough for me. I want a further confirmation. Is there a bearish crossover? Okay. If there is, that means now I have three ticks in my box. Okay. Three of my boxes are ticked. I have three very strong bearish signal that the price is going down. Okay. And if the MACD is also below the zero line, all the better. Now I got four signals. Okay. When the MACD is below the zero line, means what, guys? Can you remember? Can you type in the chat box? Woo hello. When the MACD is below the zero line, What trend is it? What trend? Yeah, bearish momentum. What trend? Downtrend, right? Yeah. So now I have four signals telling me, okay, I should go short. So if I go long, uh, okay, I must slap myself. Okay, right? If I enter a long position here, I have to slap myself. Okay. Because now I have four very strong confirmation okay or, or indicators or signals telling me that i should go short okay this is how i trade guys okay as traders we want to trade with odds on our side so the more confirmations that are on our side okay that means the more odds are on our side in other words that means our chances of winning is higher if our chance of winning is not high, or if my chance of winning is not high, I won't trade. Because I'm not gambling. You are not gambling. I don't want you guys to gamble. I want you guys to trade with the odds on your side. Okay? With as many confirmations as possible. So it's up to you how many confirmations you want. Okay? Some of you may be happy with one confirmation, you go in already, you know? Some of you may want to wait for more confirmations. Remember, currently you guys are trading with very small amounts of money. Okay, you probably don't feel the pinch. Okay, when you lose tens of tens uh, ten twenty dollars or maybe some of you lose few hundred dollars, you may not even feel the pinch. Okay, when you are trading with tens of thousands of dollars, okay, when every single percent is equivalent to thousands of dollars maybe you will feel the pinch i don't know okay some of you may be multi-millionaires huh? even that you won't feel the pinch but i will feel the pinch <laughs> okay if i'm down a few thousand dollars on the trade okay. so when that time comes okay you have to decide how many confirmations do you need before you enter a trade Right now, you may not understand what I'm saying or you may not feel what I'm saying because your, 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 your positions are very small. Okay, wait till, like I said, wait till your, your, your trades are in the tens of thousands of dollars. When every single percent is equivalent to a few thousand dollars, losses or wins, then you will know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay, so that's why I want to trade with as many confirmations on my side as possible, as many odds on my side. Otherwise, I won't go in. You get what I'm saying? Right. So for me, it's very simple. All this must align as many as possible. It's like you know, all the stars align or all the planets must align before I go in. Another example here, right? Okay, uh, a bearish crossover. Okay, that's one. Okay, it's in the retracement zone. Okay. Uh, 
is curving down over here. Okay, I can I could enter here, or I could enter here, or I could wait until there's a bearish crossover. Okay, to enter here. Okay. Because I already know. Okay, there's a bearish uh, candlestick pattern. Okay, there's a stochastic crossing down into the blue zone. Okay, I know. Right, the chances of going the, the price going down. Okay, is high. It's more than seventy percent. Okay, so I can choose to enter here, or I can choose to wait for a bearish crossover. Okay, to make sure the chance increase to eighty percent, then I enter. Because I already know it's bearish, because the, the, the MACD is below the zero line. Okay, but over here, because the MACD is so close to the zero line, okay, there could be a possibility that the, the, the MACD goes up because it's so close. Okay, so if I want to be very, very sure, I will wait for a crossover. Then I will enter. I don't mind entering late. At least when I enter, I know I'm entering on confirmation. So many confirmations. Okay. You get what I'm saying, guys? Uh, do you all get what I just said? Let me check with you. Right? At this point, when you enter, right, you are not in the retracement zone, right? Yep. Although I'm not in the retracement zone, but I know okay, the, the, the price has retraced from my retracement zone. I, I can I could enter here. Okay, but there's a risk that it, it the price may come down and then go back up. It doesn't mean after the retracement zone confirm you'll go down, right? Okay, sometimes it may come down and then go back up. So if I enter here, I could be taking a risk. Okay, although the risk is uh, not too big because well, when, when there's a bearish and galving pattern and then uh, stochastic is going down. Okay, seventy percent of the time, Okay, the price will go down, Okay, so I'm not really taking that big of a risk. But if I want to be very, very sure, I wait, lah. Because there's still the thirty percent chance the price may come back up, ma. Because the MACD is so close to the zero line. I mean, if it's so far away like that, lah, Of course, I will enter here. I, I, I don't even need to wait. Because it's so far away from the zero line, that means, uh, that means the price could can still go down for quite quite some distance. Okay. Even if let's say the MACD is going up, as long as it's still below the zero line, the price will continue to go down. But in this case, it's not, it's very close to the zero line. So I, I can choose to wait or I can choose to take a gamble and enter here. Either way, I'm entering with confirmations. You get what I'm saying? Better than anyhow enter. Okay, remember, guys, you are a fund manager now. You are managing millions of dollars. Okay, every trade you go in is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. You cannot anyhow play play. You all need to, you all need to change your mindset after this workshop. Okay, when you trade, just. Assume you are putting in tens of thousands of dollars per trade. Okay. When you see in FTX your, your profit and loss, okay, if it's in, in, in dollars, uh, let's say one dollar or two dollars, uh, just imagine that figure is two thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. If you're in a loss of a few dollars, imagine that is a few thousand dollars. Because eventually you guys will be trading that way, right? Unless unless you want to stay in this your this level for forever you know, then uh, then uh, something is wrong, right? Okay. Uh, eventually, I I'm, I'm sure a lot of you will be trading with more money. Okay. Eventually, uh, some of you may be even trading full time. Uh, like me, like Rash. Okay. All right. So you cannot afford just to earn few tens of dollars or few hundred dollars per trade right, as a full-timer. Okay, you want to make a few thousand dollars. Okay, so this is how I put everything together. All my strategies. Okay, I'll give you another example. Let's say this example. Same thing here, right? 
uh, this is a long setup. Okay, the 10 EMA is above the 20, uh, 21 EMA, the 21 EMA is above the 50, and all three are above the, 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 the 200 MA. Okay, so I'll wait for the price to come down to the retracement zone and see whether there's a bullish and galving pattern. If there is, I look at the stochastic RSI. If it's going up, good. Okay, but not good enough. I want to wait for a bullish crossover to be triple confirmed. Okay, that the price is going up. Uh, then I will enter. Uh, sorry, Kelvin, I have a question. Yep. If MACD, uh, for for example, for bearish, uh, for for downtrend bearish uh, market, uh, if let's say MACD uh, bearish crossover, but then the stock stochastic RSI is a bullish crossover, it's, it shows bullish crossover. Then what does that mean? Yeah, that means don't trade for me. Okay, because it's mixed signals. Okay, I don't Could know. Is it possible it could be just a retracement and then it, it continues? It could, the it could be possible. Anything is possible, like I said, right? Okay. But you, you have your own set of rules. You get what I mean? You set your own set of rules. Understood. My rules is it must be aligned. Then okay. I trade. I mean, this thing must go in. This thing must cross. Okay. Then I go in. If this thing go up, go in, this thing come down, no. X, bang, I'm not going to go in. Understood. You know what I'm because I will have a lot of other chances further down the road, or, or worse come to worst that day I don't trade lah. You know, <laughs> there's always the next day. Okay. okay, remember guys, you are trading with thousands of dollars. You cannot afford to make a single mistake. I don't know, <laughs> right? Some of you don't mind losing a few thousand dollars to you, okay? But for me, I mind because I've lost more than half a million dollars before, okay, in less than one year. All right, it's painful. So I don't want to go through that again. Yeah. Okay, whatever I made I, 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 in, in 2017 during the bull run, okay, in just one short year, 2018, when the market crashed, I lost everything. That was before I know how to trade. And I trade with leverage. And I don't use 20x. I use 50x, I use 100x. Yeah. Okay, there, there's, uh, there's this trading platform called BitMEX. That was the first uh, perpetual futures platform. Okay, that was before Binance, that was before FTX, that was before uh, a lot of exchanges you see today that allows you to trade perpetual futures. Okay, BitMEX was the, the first one. It allows us to trade up to 100x. Yeah, so at that time when I was new, I don't know what to do. I was greedy. And in 2017, almost whatever I buy, I make money because it's so easy to make money in the bull market. My head got big. Yeah, I thought I'm very good at trading, you know. I thought that trading is very easy. <laughs> because everything I buy goes up. <laughs> but in actual fact, I didn't know anything. Right, so the reality hits me when the market crashed. So yeah, I lost until uh, until my pants also gone. Now. <laughs> yeah, nothing left. Even underwear also gone. Yeah, so that's when I, I, I learned my lesson. Okay, so whatever I'm telling you all today is based on my experience. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, most of you are trading the way I was trading when I was new. And uh, if I can say if you continue to trade this way, you could end up like what I experienced. Uh, you could lose a lot of money. So that's why I'm telling you to, to try to change your way of trading. You know? okay, take some profit when you say 20%, move your entry to stop loss, protect your position, and then see how it goes. If the price continue to go up, hold. Okay, if the price makes a U-turn, hit your stop loss as entry, you're out, break even. Okay, next trade, do the same thing over and over again. Okay, that's, that's how I'm trading now. All right. Okay, so same thing, right? as I said, this example. So over here, even though, uh, as you can see, there's a bullish crossover here, a bullish and galving pattern, right? Okay, even though this is going in, right? But you look at the stochastic, uh, no, so you look at the MACD, 
Okay, it, it just had a bearish crossover. So I'm not going to enter here. Because my rules is all this must be there. Okay, I follow my own rules. Okay, there must be a bullish crossover. It must go in and it must have a bullish and galvin pattern. Then only I will enter. This one, yes. This one, yes. This one, no. I'm not going to enter. Okay. So trade with a set of rules, guys. Formulate your own rules, your own strategy. And then stick to it. Don't keep changing. Okay. Today, this rule. Tomorrow, that rule. Okay? The following day, another rule. Okay. Then I tell you, you confirm those man. Okay. Stick to a set of rules. And just keep trading according to your rules. All right. Okay, another example over here. Okay. Now we are we are looking at horizontal support lines. Okay, we don't have to look at the retracement zone anymore. Early examples, we are trading with uh, using the retracement zones. Okay, there are no support and resistance lines. Okay. Now this strategy can also be used on support. Or resistance lines. Okay, for example, the price come down, boop, bounce up from the support. Okay, plus there's a support trend line here, you can see. Okay, and furthermore, it also bounced off from the 200 MA. Okay, guys, one thing to note okay, the 200 MA can act as a very strong support or resistance. For traders, okay. Whenever the price bounce off the two hundred MA, okay, either bounce up or down, okay, right. It's a very strong signal. Okay, if it bounce up, it's a strong signal that we can open a long position. Okay. Plus, if the bounce takes place exactly at a support line, a, a horizontal support, plus a trend line, it becomes an even stronger signal. It's like a, a confluence point here. Okay. All the support traders in the world, all the trend lines trader in the world, all the moving average traders in the world, they'll be looking at this same spot. What are they looking for? An opportunity to long. If let's say the price were to bounce off. So if you follow the crowd, okay, you open a long position here, okay, you probably make big money. Okay, if you go against the crowd, if when everyone is longing, you go short, then you die. Lah. Okay. So these are confluent points that I look out for. Okay. If I see this something like this, I'm very happy. Okay. Because I know there are thousands of, ten, maybe even tens or hundreds of thousands of fellow traders all around the world, although I don't know them, okay, they will be looking at the same spot I am looking at. And most likely, they will be thinking to long. If let's say the, the price bounce. So I'll look for something like this, uh, a bounce off support, then plus this stochastic going into the blue zone, and there's a bullish crossover. Uh, this one confirm make money on. Okay, because of this confluence points plus this plus this. Okay, even though the MACD is below the zero line. Okay, this could signal. A a a a a a trend reversal. So I don't mind taking a risk, to enter a position here, a long instead of a a short, even though it's below. Okay. Okay. All right. Just one one question here. Will these lines uh, display? Because this is a lagging indicator, right? Like, um, see, when we look back, we can see that the blue clearly crossed over. But when we are, let's say, on that particular day, mm -hmm. uh, let's say the MACD or stochastic RSI won't be showing this correct. Uh, it will be showing clear. exactly what you see here. Really? Yep. Because I feel sometimes it's not very clear, you know, like. Which, <laughs> it's exactly yeah. what you see, guy. Uh, uh, who's that? Because they say it's lagging, right? Like it's always calculating and catching up. Wait, wait, By the time that, the move would have already you? gone. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> who's that talking to me? Yeah, sorry. This is Manit. Manit. Yeah. Manit. Okay. 
the MACD is not a lagging indicator. All right. Neither is the is the stochastic RSI. What is lagging is the moving averages. Okay, the MACD is not a lagging indicator, neither is the stochastic RSI. Okay, it's the moving averages that are lagging. <clears throat> and obviously, the support, the support and resistance lines are not lagging indicators at all. Yeah. You get what I'm saying, Manif? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So as you can see over here, that's an is it is another confluence point. Okay. Support. Trend line plus this 200 MA. Actually, even without this, right, you can safely enter a long position here. Because this is a, a very strong confluence uh, point. If let's say the price were to bounce up, uh, okay, very high chance it will continue to go, it will go, you go back up instead of going down. But same thing, if it goes down, if it breaks down, okay, you'll be sure uh, the price will continue to go down. Because every, like I said, every support trader in the world. Every trend line trader in the world and every moving average trader in the world will open a short position if the price breaks down. So you just follow. Okay. Even without these two indicators, you can safely enter a position. Okay. But if let's say these two indicators are showing you the same uh, confirmation, all the better. Okay, like this, the price bounce up, bullish and galving candlestick pattern. Okay, uh, stochastic going up into the blue zone plus a bullish crossover. So if you we... see this, you don't, I call it my tool, MTL, just get in. Yep. Okay, is there a possibility that it may be a fake out? Uh, what fake out? Like, you know, like they fake breakout, then after that, like, then it still goes bullish. Like for example, just now you say, if let's say it, it breaks down, right? Like this, uh, fake. Fake. Yeah, something like that. But it's more obvious one. Uh, maybe it's this one is just a week. Uh. Let's say uh -huh. they close below uh, the trend line and the resist support resistance. Uh. Uh, I mean the support line. Uh. Mm -hmm. Let's say like most of them, most of the the, the traders okay. see they were actually short. Uh. Okay, guys, it, yeah. the, your the, trend line and your support and resistance is also not very accurately drawn one. Okay, it's impossible to draw so accurate. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Okay, that's why we need the other indicators to tell us. Okay, so let's say this candlestick may 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 may, may become may okay, let's say it's longer. Okay, this candlestick is also longer. Okay, but it doesn't mean it is not bouncing off from support level. It just means that my support level is not exactly you know where it's supposed to be. It's impossible to to draw exactly where it's supposed to be. You get what I mean, guys? That's why we need the other indicators to, to tell us whether is it going back up or down or sideways. So as you can see from here, okay, you see these two candlesticks. Okay, on this support level, okay, it is just nice. Okay, it just bounces off, right? But on the the two hundred MA, it closed below the two hundred MA. Okay, but on this tr support trend line. Okay, why is it exactly here so nice? It's because I draw. Ma. <laughs> That's why you, you, you think that, uh, oh, so nice. It just bounces off from this trend line. Yeah. But actually, it may not. Okay, it's just that I draw exactly like this. Okay. But as long as it bounces off this area, okay, area, okay, plus this sign, this confirmation, and this confirmation, okay. It doesn't matter whether is it a fake out or fake in or fake whatever, okay? It's a signal to enter a long position. Okay, guys, that's why we need these two indicators. Or that's why I need, okay? I trade with these two indicators for futures trading. Yeah, it could be a fake out, right? But if these two indicators are telling me that oh, it could be a fake down, okay? But if these two indicators are telling me that uh, the price is going to go up, okay, bullish uh, confirmation plus all this support and, and trend lines, uh, I'll go in even, even if it seems like a fake down. Because these two indicators tell me to go in. Okay. All right. All right, guys. I, I, I hope you understand what I, I just said. 
Harvey? Was it Harvey who? Yeah, Harvey. <laughs> Asik, you can uh, Kelvin, <laughs> Kelvin do, you, do you use the word bullish crossover for stock RSI? Like, uh, because I practically what's happening is the same thing, right? If you look at the bullish crossover in the MACD, you can see the same thing happening in the stock RSI. But do you yeah. use that term to indicate a crossover in the stock RSI or you just say enter the blue zone? Then just go. I, wa go. I wanted to enter the blue zone. Yeah. So, so. The word crossover doesn't apply to stock RSI, right? Oh, you, you you definitely cross over before it enters the blue zone. It, it but it must enter, enter the blue zone first, right? No, you will cross over first before it enters the blue zone. You see, you always cross over first before it enters the blue zone. But we go in when it enters the blue zone, right? Uh, for me, la, for me, yes. Yeah, yeah. For you, I don't know. Like I said, you come up with your own strategies. You can trade like me or you can trade not like me. Okay. Or you, you can trade like Rash. Rash and I trade differently. I'm sure you all by now you 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 can you realize. Okay, there's no right or wrong. You get what I mean? Ultimately, at the end of the day, you learn from us, you come up with your own strategy that you are comfortable with. Okay. Some traders they will go in once there's a crossover. Okay, on the stochastic RSI. For me, I want to, I will normally wait for it to go into the blue zone. Okay, most of the time, okay, I will wait for it to go into the blue zone. Then I will enter. Okay, right. For you guys, I don't know, right? You come up with your own strategy. Some of you may enter here. I can't know. I know. Some of you, once it goes down, only you enter already. Okay. If you find that it works for you, go ahead. Okay. It's just that I've tried everything. I've tried a lot of things. Okay, it doesn't work for me. Okay, it works for me when I mean it works for me and I'm comfortable with uh with the when when the stochastic RSI is, is going into the blue zone. Right. So that's that's why I trade like that. So uh, if you look back, uh, how successful is this for you? Like uh, how many like in terms of percentage, would you say? Definitely more than 70%. Okay, okay. Right. Definitely more than 70%. So far, so far this month, my trades has been 100 percent I I also have a, a what you call the spreadsheet. <laughs> right. So far it's 100 percent This is in futures, is it? Futures trading. Futures trading, yeah. Touch wood. Haven't lost yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Okay. And, and uh, in actual fact, all the all the all the all the profits are actually in the Discord channel. I don't know whether you guys are in the Discord channel or not. So all my trades are put in the Discord channel, so you can actually uh, see lah. Those are the trades that I trade, like that I traded lah. It's also in the WhatsApp group chat. Uh, Kelvin, do you compare this um, uh, the setup of among multiple time frames? For instance, the one hour setup gives you uh, a, a, a go in signal, whereas do you do you compare that with the fifteen minute chart? Yeah, I beg your pardon again. Do you say? According to uh, you, you have your entry criteria, right? Mm -hmm. So you get the one hour chart and it gives you the signal to go in. Do you compare that with the 15 minute chart, for instance, the same things? Uh, no. no. So the same things? No. Okay. I don't trade on a 15 minute chart. Uh, I also don't advise you guys to trade anything lower than one hour. You can use it for reference, but you don't trade on that chart. Because uh, the, the lower time frames gives a lot of uh, false signals because it moves too fast. Yeah, okay. So if you are not experienced enough, uh, you, you will get caught out by a lot of false signals. So the one hour chart is just nice. One hour chart is just nice. Okay. okay. 
So obviously you can see there are a lot of entry points. There are a lot of, uh, I, I just, in this example, I only drew two supports, support levels. There are a lot of other support levels here. There are a lot, you get what I'm saying? On every chart, you can you will be able to find a lot of support and resistances. You will be able to find a lot of trend lines. You can draw a lot of lines, okay? But my criteria is it has to be like this. It has to be like this. It has to be like this, you know, for example. Then only I go in, okay? For example, over here, this is also a support, okay? The price also came down, touch support, and then go up. But I'm not going to enter here because it doesn't satisfy my criteria. Why? Because the stochastic is at the top. Right? And there's no crossover here. So here, I'm not going to enter. Even though, if you enter here, you can still make a lot of money. And it's not wrong to enter here because this is a support. But I have my set of rules. You get what I'm saying? You guys have your own set of rules. So you have to stick to your set of rules. So my rules tell me that I cannot enter here. Okay, guys, trade, trade like a robot, you know, robot. <laughs> robot has no emotions, right? The programmer programs the rules and the robot just follow the rules. So my, my rule is, if this is a support, but then this one and this one doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, it's a no-go, so I'm not going to trade. So I'm not going to press the buy button or the long button. Okay, I will wait until the price hit support, the stochastic RSI going into the blue zone, crossing up, there's a crossover here, going up, and then there's a bullish crossover, okay, I enter. That's it, very simple. Okay, when you trade with, your, with a set of rules, it becomes very, very simple, okay? And you will not be confused and you will not be emotional. Trust me, guys. All right, trade, always trade with a set of rules. Okay, same example over here. Another example, this is shorting. Okay, short at resistance. <clears throat> okay, so obviously, first thing you need to do is draw a resistance trend line. Harvey, <laughs> very funny. All right. Okay, draw a resistance trend line. That's the first thing you guys need to do. Draw your resistance uh, support or your trend lines first. Okay, draw it first. Okay, if you want to short, identify where the resistances are. Where are the resistance levels? So once you have identified the resistance levels, okay, wait for the price to hit your resistance level. See whether is it a bearish engulfing candlestick. If it is, good. Then look down. See whether the stochastic RSI is going down. If yes, good. Look down some more. See whether there's a bearish crossover. If yes, go in. That's it. No emotions. Okay, enter. Same over here. Okay, the price, if you miss this entry, just be patient, wait. Like I said, there will be chances down the road. All right. If you miss a trade, there will always be chances down the road for you to get in again. Okay. So wait, 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 wait. Okay. Until here, you see a bearish and galvin candlestick pattern, right? The price bounce, okay, even though there's a fake out, but then after that, it comes back down at resistance or more. Okay, then look down. See whether the stochastic is coming down. If it's not, then don't go in. If it is, look down some more, okay? Oh, not haven't crossed over yet, but coming down, so there could be a crossover. Then just continue to wait, be patient. Okay, wait until there's a bearish crossover. Okay, short. Here, lo. Yeah, some, some, uh, somewhere here. Kel Kelvin, uh, you to here. Yeah, I want to ask you, because on the first, the left-hand side, that one, right? Uh, if I look at the EMEs, right? Green above blue, blue above red, and above the SME 200, then the first in, first thinking would be to long the long this uh, avalanche, right? Yeah. Then why would you choose to short this then? I'm just showing an example. No, no, as in this this one just means that it uh it doesn't tick the checkbox for us. La. Is it? I'm just using this chart as an example. Okay, but normally I won't I won't trade, but oh. you can still do it. You can uh, just, it's just an example how to 
just ignore the trend line, the, the moving averages using this. Okay. This here. Okay, okay. Yep. You can still you can still uh uh make money. Okay, so but uh, but if let's say this is a real trade, right? Uh, and then uh part two and part three haven't come out yet. Uh, we are still on the we are still on the first uh still hitting the first resistance level, right? Would you not do anything because the signals don't show, don't check all the signals that you have? Yeah. Like for example, over here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go in because look at the signals. Mm. Okay, this is the middle. Okay, this this part here, right? This this part here. The stochastic is in the middle going down already. So this is this is obviously a, a cross for me. X. So don't don't even need to look at the MACD. This already, this this already is a no go. I mean for me lah, okay. This is already a no go. I'm not gonna go in. Okay. Of course, if you go in, you are still not wrong. Okay, you will still make money. But like I said, uh, I trade with a set of rules. It must be this. It must be this. Then I go in. So I I rather not take a risk over here, because anything can happen. You go in here, the price can continue to go up. You and have, on the, the one to the left, eh? Here. The, uh, the previous one. Yeah. Uh, this one. So if you look at this, uh, the on the right hand side hasn't happened. Ma. But if you look at just the EME lines, right? Mm -hmm. It's showing that it's supposed to be long. Ma. Yeah, it looks long, right? But it's, it bounces off resistance. Ma. Oh, so then then after that you decide what's the next thing to, to do. Yeah. See whether it, it breaks out or not. Lo. Okay, got it. If it yeah. breaks out, obviously I long. Mm. Then that means. That means this these three lines will continue to go up. But in this case, it bounced down. Mm -hmm. So since it's, it bounced down, then it, I mean it's ridiculous to open a long position, right? Just because it is above this 200 MA. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Okay. So you could be you could you could be trading a pullback. Oh? I mean, this is a pullback. Pullback can still make money, yeah. Uh, mm. Right? Yep. Doesn't mean pullback cannot make money. Uh. This... And then after that goes back down to the retracement, then you long again. Uh. Uh, you long till the okay. Then you look, you look at the stock SRI side, is it going back up? Then yep. you see whether the rules here, you know, the MACD. Mm -hmm. If let's say there's a bullish crossover here, then uh -huh. it's going back in, then you long. Okay, okay. So you make money here, you make money here. You make money here, make, 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 make. Okay, done. Okay. Your one month, uh, your one month salary done. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I'm not kidding. Seriously. Okay. Okay. I mean, if let's say your your position is big, you know, just this trade alone, you make here, make here, make here, make here, make here. Your one month salary are uh, got done already. <laughs> you can relax for the rest of the month. Okay. 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 <laughs> got it. Got it. Thanks. Right. So, yeah. So at the end of the day, like I said, always, uh, I said a lot of times. So that means it's very important. Okay, trade with a set of rules, your own rules. Hey, Kelvin, we look at the second box. Uh, the the criteria. This is for a short setup, right? Yeah. But the criteria of the EMA does not meet. But in this case, you say we don't. We disregard the EMAs, is it? Yeah, just disregard the EMA because it just bounces off from resistance. Because this this could be a a change of a change of trend, you see. It's a, so when you when you want to trade a, a trend reversal, then the the obviously the the moving averages you can't take it into into consideration really. It's definitely okay. The moving averages will definitely be moving move will will definitely be going up, but because you want to short it, but you want to you are expecting a trend of reversal, ma, right? So you right. can put the moving averages into account already. Oh, okay. So this, this is this is trading. This is a, a, a trend reversal trade. Yeah, okay. expecting the price okay. to change to come down. This is uptrend, uptrend, but it hit resistance, ma, right? And it refuses to go up. So it could con it could come down. That means the trend could, mm. could change. You get what I mean? But of course, we don't know whether it will change or, or not. All right. We look at the stock as, we look at the other indicators. So this indicator is showing that uh, the price could come down. Then plus there's a bearish crossover. 
okay, that the price could come down, right? And if you look at the, 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 the MACD, it's sloping downwards, although it's still on top of the zero line, okay? But there's a possibility that it may come down the zero line. So when it comes down the zero line, that means confirm the price is going down because it will, it will become bearish momentum then. It, as, in, as you see in this case, uh, the MACD crosses here. After that, it just trades below the zero line and, it's, and you can see the price, the, 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 the trend is downwards. You get what I'm saying? Understand, thank you. Ah, okay. So sometimes we need to be flexible. Uh, so, so Kelvin, in, in the case of a MACD bearish crossover, do you consider the crossover or the fact that it's gone down below zero as your confirmation? Uh, sorry, again? In, in, the MACD, uh, in the MACD indicator, do you consider the bearish crossover or should it be below zero or both? To, to, uh, to open a short position? Yeah. Okay. Earlier I mentioned it depends on you. Okay, you're the trader. Okay, some some traders they will open the position here. Okay, once they see a bearish crossover, some will wait until the MACD crosses below the zero line for a stronger confirmation that the trend has changed from a bullish to a bearish trend. So you you decide whether you want to enter here or here. Okay, for me I enter here because I have this signal. Right, and this signal. So I feel confident to enter. Yeah, I don't want to wait until here. Because when if I wait until here, I mean it could, it could be too late. Even though, even though most likely I will I will still make money, but uh, I want to make more money, like you can saying. All right, thank you. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, the Discord, the Discord link, uh, it will, it's only valid for a week. Okay, every week the Discord link will change. So the, so the previous Discord link given by Resh, of course, uh, is invalid now because it has been, uh, it has been there for more than a week already. So probably uh, you need to tell, ask Resh to post onto the WhatsApp group chat again the discord link okay right so let's put the discord aside <clears throat> okay so this is another example okay on using moving averages to trade okay now what you want what now what we are doing is trying to catch a trend reversal using the moving average to catch a trend reversal okay. so how does it work same thing, okay. Remember, when the 10 EMA crosses down the 21 EMA, okay, what is that? It's a first sign that the trend is coming to an end and serve as an early warning sign for traders, okay. So you can choose to enter here or you can choose to wait. For me, I choose to wait. Because it's just a, to me, it's just an early warning sign. It's not a confirmation that the trend has changed, okay? But I will take note, okay? Because the warning signs are there, early warning signs. I will wait, wait for what? Wait for this strong signal, okay? Wait for the 10 and 21 EMA to cross the 50 EMA here, okay? Over here, it's just the 10 EMA crossing, okay? The 21 EMA hasn't crossed yet. It just skimmed off the 50 EMA. Okay, it didn't cross down. Only the green one crossed. Okay, not good enough for me. I want both. So wait, over here, the green and blue line cross below the, the red line. Okay, the 10 and 21 EMA cross below the 50 EMA. Okay, this is a strong signal that the trend is ending. So what do I do next? I look down. I look at my stochastic RSI. Is it coming down? If it's not, I'm not going to enter. If it is, yes. But still not good enough. I will look down 
some more to look at the MACD. Is the MACD showing me a bearish crossover? If it is, good, enter. Simple. Same principle as before, but a different strategy. Okay, now I'm using moving average and not support and resistances or trend lines. Okay. So same thing here. Let's say I missed this entry. Alamak, I was asleep or, or whatever. Lah. Okay, don't know what I was doing. I missed this entry. Okay. I just wait. Okay. There will be another chance for me. Okay. Because this is already a strong signal that the trend is going down. Okay, the trend has changed from an uptrend to a downtrend. I just need to buy my time. So what am I going to wait for? I wait for the 10, 21, and 50 EMA to cross the, the 200. I mean, this is a stronger confirmation that the trend has entered. So when I see this, I look down. Okay. Did no? If the, the stochastic RSI is has is going down, plus there was a bearish crossover. Okay. Even though this happened after these two signals appeared, okay, I can safely confirm okay, that the trend is going down. Because remember, the 200 MA acts as a very strong support or resistance. Okay, this is a breakdown. It's a confirmation of a breakdown support. Okay, using the 200 MA as a support. It's a confirmation of a breakdown plus the stochastic and, and, and the MACD. Okay, also gave bearish signals. And what's more, the MACD has already gone down below the zero line. So this is a confirmation. It's more than confirmed, I, I would say, okay, that the trend is going down. It's a bearish trend. So what do we do when it's more than confirmed that the trend is going down? Enter. La. <laughs> Still wait for what? Right? So let's assume you missed this entry. Okay? Again, you miss a second entry. You're sleeping. Okay, never mind, there's still a third entry. Okay, you wait for a pull back to the, re, uh, the retracement zone. Okay, now you see the three, the three moving averages are below the 200 MA already, right? It's definitely downtrend. You can look at the MACD. So you don't be stupid and then look for long opportunities, okay? Right? Okay, you should be looking for opportunities to short. Okay, you should be looking for entries to short. So where are you going to enter? Just wait, wait for it to go into the retracement zone, see whether you know, there are any uh, bearish signals from the stochastic RSI, okay? followed by the MACD, whether there's a bearish crossover. So you could choose to enter here if you want to. Even though there is no uh, bearish crossover, okay? because there's already a very strong signal before. Okay, here that the trend is going down. Okay, or as I said, you can choose to be the patient and uh, careful conservative trader. You wait patiently for a bearish crossover, then you enter. Enter here. Okay, I mean, that's how I trade. I look at the signals. All right, any questions, guys? Fun or not? Is it fun? Or is it simple? Yeah, I mean, one here. Mm -hmm. So when you say enter, we still follow what you say, like uh, the enter below the, the wick and then yeah. stop loss uh, above the right. candle. Yep, you're yeah, right. Okay. Let me try to do that. La. That's the best. La. Okay, but even if you do, do even if you don't do that, it's okay because the signals are there already, right? Even if you, you don't enter below the candlestick, you enter on top. Okay, uh, most often than not, okay, you will make money, you will be right. Because you are trading with confirmations from the stochastic and the MACD. Okay, plus the trend lines. There are so many confirmations. Like I said, okay, guys, as traders, 
Okay, you want to trade with odds on your side. You want to trade with as many confirmations as possible. Okay, don't just anyhow go in. So if you trade with as many confirmations as possible, your winning rate will definitely be more than 50%. It can go as high as 70 or 80% as you become better and better. Okay. Uh, David, no, no screener to catch this. Okay. okay, so this is another example. Okay. Wait, David, what do you mean by screeners to catch this? I mean, I, I have a short and long screener uh, to, catch, to, to catch the coins that are on an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay, but I don't know whether that is uh, what you are referring to or not. Okay. Anyway, yeah, trading view screener. Okay. So this is uh, another example, right? No, there is no screener to detect these three signals. You got to you got to you got to screen, you got to look at it yourself. Alerts, uh, yeah, you can, but it's a bit complicated. Lah. Yeah, I mean, uh, even Stochastic and MACD, you can also set alerts, guys, okay, if you don't know, okay, but it's a bit complicated. There will be too many alerts for you to set. All right. So how I catch my trade? Just wait for these signals to, to appear. Okay, later, later I, I will do a live example to show you all, right? So this is another example, all right, to, to catch a, a, a change of trend. Okay, so same thing, right? Warning sign first, okay, followed by a strong signal, okay, the 10 and 21 EMA crossing the 50 EMA. So when you see this, look down, okay, if the, if you, if the stochastic is also going down, plus there's a bearish crossover, then just short, open a short position. Okay, same, if you miss this first entry, there's always another chance. Okay, when the three EMAs cross the 200 uh, moving average, then just look down to see whether it's a, it, there's, a, it's a, there's a confirmation that the price is going down or not. Right. So same if let's say stochastic is showing you uh, a, a crossover here and then going down into the blue zone, plus there's a bearish crossover. And obviously the MACD will be going down into the below the zero line. So you know it is going down. Okay, more or less. Almost confirmed it's going down. So you can safely open a short position. If you miss again, never mind. Now we use another strategy. Okay, we use the trading in the retracement zone strategy. Look for a bearish candlestick pattern. Okay, look, wait for the price to go into the retracement zone. Look down. Okay, if this is going down, right, you can consider to enter a position. Or if you want to wait, okay, wait for a bearish crossover, go ahead. Right, then. Enter here. Or you can enter some here. Then when there's a confirmation here, you DCA in. Okay, you 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 enter you you open another position here. So you got two positions, you got more money in the, in the trade. Either way works. Okay, any questions, guys? Before we, we take a break.
is it am i going too fast are you all lost or okay if if you if you guys feel okay please type okay if you are lost you type lost Do you all understand how to trade now? We are using the default uh, indicators, right? In TradeView, the, the default MACD and Stochastic RSI. Uh, the MACD need, need, need a little bit of uh, changes. Okay, later I, I let, I'll tell you all what are the changes. Okay, for the rest, it's all default. Okay. And and in both the cases, it's the blue line. We are we are looking the direction of the blue line, right? In both the uh, indicators. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I use blue lines, lah. I mean, you guys can change your color. <laughs> okay. Okay. I thought it was the default color. Okay. Actually, it's the default color. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Just now I heard a lady's voice. Any uh, who's that? Yeah, Susu here. So if let's say in terms of important the checklist, right? The MACD crossing over, uh, but if it's be not below zero, that is the least important, is it? Uh, don't get what you mean, Nick. Because you just now say checklist must have like uh the MACD is like bearish movement, RSI is bearish or that, but sometimes like let's say the MACD is not below the zero mark, right? But you see the rest are all downtrend movement. It is okay to risk a bit, right? So if you are saying if let's say the rest are all downtrend, but then the D is above the zero line. Yes, correct. What would I do? Yeah, correct. Firstly, if let's say the D is above the zero line, okay, right? That means the price is on an uptrend. It's not possible that it will be on a downtrend. Okay. But I think I think if you look at the second peach circle, huh, the MACD is above zero, right? The crossover there. Where? Here? No, Only the second second orange circle, bearish crossover, you see? Yeah. Ah, this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. The crossover, the MACD is above zero. Huh? Yeah. Because you see this this small little uptrend. Yeah. Uh huh. It is a uh, like a pullback lah. Okay, so in this case, we should wait for them to go below the zero. Then we start to place a trade lah. Uh, as I said, I wait for it to have a bearish crossover. If it does, there is a bearish. Yeah, if there's a bearish crossover, I place a trade lock. I don't I don't normally wait for it to go below. Oh. If the bearish crossover takes place of almost at the same time as uh, it goes below, all the better. Lah. You get what I'm saying? Okay, if you look at this, if you look at this uh back D, right? You look at this whole whole stretch here, starting from here. Here. Ignore this. This is this is, this is like a fake out, you know, a little bit of uh, upwards movement. Same thing here. If you look at this from here to here, all the way here, okay, it is it is trading below the zero line from here to here, right? Then you look at the chart, okay, from here, 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 which is somewhere here, right? All the way here. You look at the trend; it's all the way going down, right? Okay, so the MACD tells us the trend is if it's below, okay, I can, you can almost be sure, okay, the price is on a downtrend. If it's above, you can almost be sure that the price is on an uptrend. That's, Got it. that's how the, that's what the MACD is for. It's a momentum indicator. It indicates the momentum. Whether is it up, whether is it bullish or bearish momentum. So it's a very powerful indicator. Right? If let's say the MACD is, is below, okay, that means the, the price is going down, it's a downtrend. Okay. So if you want to long, if you want to long, you are either trading the you are either trying to trade the pullback 
that means you long the pullback or you are hoping that there's a trend reversal. Because if not, the price will continue to go down as long as the MACD stays below the zero line. So you decide, okay, if you know that the price is going down, it's a downtrend, what do you want to trade? Do you want to trade the pullback? That means you are trading against the trend. Or do you want to trade with the trend? Or do you want to catch a trend reversal? You decide. So if you want to, if you want to, sorry, if you want to trade a pullback, okay, then you wait for the stochastic RSI to go into the blue zone, go up into the blue zone. If you want to trade a pullback, that means you're trading against the trend, which I don't encourage newbies to do. Okay, but if you insist, that's how you're going to trade. Same, you got to look for support, support lines. You go draw a straight support line and find a support. Wait for it to bounce up from support. Okay. Wait for a bullish candlestick pattern. Look at the stochastic RSI. If it's going up into the blue zone, good. Then look at the MACD. If there's a bearish crossover taking place below the zero line, okay, that's where you enter. But that's how you trade the pullback. Okay, but if you don't want to trade the pullback, you want to trade with the trend, then you wait for the price to go into the retracement zone or you can look for your resistance, support and resistance line, not resistance. Okay, wait for it to go into the retracement zone and if let's say the resistance line happen to take place in the retracement zone, all the better. Okay, you have two confluence points. Then look, wait for a bearish and galvin candlestick to appear. Okay, if it appears, good. Look at the stochastic. If it goes down, good. Then look at the MACD. If it stays below the zero line, even better. Okay, then wait for a bearish crossover, then enter. Like that. <laughs> I mean, that's how I trade. There's no 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 magic, no, no, no secret mag power or what. That's how I trade. <laughs> Okay. So does the strategy work only if it is trending in one of the directions or would it work even if it's a neutral or like, you know, a direction? Yeah, sideways. Yeah. Sideways, we don't trade. How to trade sideways? Yeah, we, like what if it's stuck in a range, you know? Like sideways, we can still trade. Been... Then that's a different type of trading strategy. We, we, we trade breakouts if it is in a range. Okay. Right. Yeah. Kevin, sorry, can I just check um, the um, uh, MACD crossover, right? Let's say if it happens something like the one which is between the 14 and 15 is slightly above the zero, uh, but it's a bearish crossover. Supposedly on top, uh, those uh, factors, yeah. right, indicators yeah. um, also align to the bearish, then I can also yeah. enter, right? This, yeah. right? You're talking about here. Yes, yes, correct. Uh -huh. So supposing our, uh, stock RSI is also uh, curving down in, into the blue zone and right. let's say uh, the 10, let's say the indicators like EMA, all these are um, okay. also sh showing bearish mode. La. So I'm asking the MACD, if MACD is slightly above the zero, like mm -hmm. in the, this one that you're pointing at, this is uh, also something that we can enter the trade, right? Because uh, it yeah. already crossed over, although it's above zero. Yep. Uh, you can right. also enter here if you want yeah. to, right? If let's say uh, there's a, if you have drawn a, re, a resistance line over here. Yeah. Okay. That means the price just bounce off resistance mm. and there's a bearish candlestick pattern. Yes. Then you look down. Okay. Oh, crossover also. Then you look down here. Oh, so there's a crossover. Yeah. You can enter. Oh, okay. okay. And thanks. But I, but the reason I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, say that you can enter here is because I want to show you all the, the, uh, the downward trend average, uh, because uh, using moving average example. Oh okay. Because over here there's over here this, there's no uh, uh the, the green, yeah correct. I mean it's still a positive trend because the green is above blue. Yet. Yeah. yeah the three lines are still moving upwards. Uh, yeah. Over. Okay. So it could I mean there's no guarantee that you'll come down because the three lines are still moving upwards. You only have this and this to, to confirm that it could come down. 
I want to have more confirmation. You get what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Because I'm assuming, let's say, if there's a horizontal support on top, where the 48, the price 48 there is, right? It's like a retest, then come yeah, down. Yeah. 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 Okay. So as long as long as you you as long as you guys remember what I have taught you, all right, you can be flexible a bit, you know, okay, you know what I mean? Mm, okay, got it. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Seriously, if you guys really understand what I just taught you, uh, you'll find that trading is actually very simple. Uh, it may come to a point that it's very easy. And once you see this, you see this, you see this, okay, enter. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right. If you see this, you see that, then don't enter because it's, it's, it doesn't fulfill your criteria, your rules. And then, so when you start to do that, you find that trading is very fun and it's very simple. Okay, There's no stress at all. You're only stressful if you don't know what you're doing. You keep scratching your head. What do I do? What do I do? Where do I draw this? Draw that? You know, and That's when it becomes very stressful. But once you know what you're doing, it becomes very fun. So let's let's take a break. If there's no more questions, last call. Last call, 5.40. Okay, no questions. We take a 10 minutes break. 5.50, we come back. Okay? 5.50, 5.50. Then we will move on to uh, the FTX exchange already. Okay, how to, how to set your orders and stuff. Okay, 550, see you guys.